On the 20th of August, the stage will be set. The anticipation reaches its peak and the WWE Universe descends upon Levi Stadium for the most colossal party of the summer. A fatal four-way match for the WWE Championship will bring together four Raw All-Stars as Matt Riddle defends his title against a trio of juggernauts, Bobby Lashley, Karrion Cross, and the franchise John Cena. A match that culminates the bad blood between all of these competitors throughout the summer. Who will leave with the bragging rights, and most importantly, as the WWE Champion? Edge and Randy Orton, two legends bound by a rivalry that defines time, are destined to collide once again, writing the next chapter of their storied history. The echoes of their past will fuel a battle that knows no end. It's been dubbed the money fight as the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, challenges the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, for the prestigious WWE Women's Championship. A clash of power, strikes, and holds that will redefine the landscape of the women's division. The pursuit of becoming the face of America reaches its climax as Cody Rhodes faces the undefeated ring general, Gutha, for the United States Championship. Will Rhodes overcome the odds and solidify his claim to the kingdom? A clash of titans looms as Kevin Owens, the man who awakened the beast, steps into the ring with Brock Lesnar in a no-holds-barred match. Can Owens outsmart the calculated fury of the beast incarnate? Or is Brock Lesnar ready to conquer his adversary in this highly anticipated collision? The 2023 King of the Ring winner, Austin Theory, now aims for the ultimate prize, challenging the Scottish warrior, Drew McIntyre, for supremacy. Can Theory rise to the occasion? Can Theory do what no other man has? Will tonight be the crowning moment in Austin Theory's young, yet successful career? Or will the fire-breathing dragon continue to spew his fire upon every challenger who dares to step foot in his way? All roads have led to the biggest event of the summer, to this monumental evening. As the sun shines its bright spotlight, who will stand under it in victory? Tonight is about history, a night to feel the adrenaline and experience the thrill as these battles begin to unfold. Tonight, it's time to fight for championships, retribution, bragging rights, and immortality. Welcome to the biggest party yet, a night you will never forget. Welcome to SummerSlam! You are looking live at the Bay Area, San Francisco, California, where we will celebrate the 2023 SummerSlam! Nine matches assigned, six championships to be defended as the WWE descends upon California tonight. We are live inside Levi Stadium, sold out max capacity for the biggest party yet. Welcome to SummerSlam! And what better way to kick things off than the Rated R Superstar Edge! 25 years in this amazing industry, countless SummerSlam events, but Edge has still got the wheels turning, still got fire burning deep down inside of him. And tonight at SummerSlam, a rivalry that can very much be considered fight forever. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Weighing in at 249 pounds, Edge! Well, Edge has forever been intertangled in an issue with the Viper Randy Orton. But things took a turn last month at Money in the Bank when Edge and Randy Orton took on Drew McIntyre in a triple threat match for the World Heavyweight Championship. Originally supposed to be one-on-one, -on -one, Randy Orton blames Edge 
for leaving Columbus last month without the big gold belt. Randy Orton and Edge have forever been intertwined. Whether it is side by side or standing across the ring from each other, you look upon the years 2007, 2010, 2020, up until last year when these two men met inside Hell in a Cell. A rivalry that has spread across year over year here in WWE and seemingly will never end. Fight Forever has been the tagline that people have dubbed upon Edge and Randy Orton. No matter the wars these two men contest in, the issues seemingly will never be settled. But hopefully tonight we can settle the score, at least for now, on Friday Night SmackDown. The Apex Predator Randy Orton, as we mentioned, originally had a one-on-one -on -one match with Drew McIntyre last month. That was interrupted by the Rated R Superstar Edge, who defeated Randy Orton in a matchup on Friday Night SmackDown, earning his way into the World Championship match last month. Randy Orton has not forgotten, and he has taken issue with a man who has forever been a thorn in his side. And now tonight here at SummerSlam, we kick things off with the next chapter in this storied rivalry. The Rated R Superstar Edge, the Viper Randy Orton. We are live. Let's get things going here in Levi Stadium. Edge trying to come out of the gate hot. Randy Orton had it scouted. Expected such of the Rated R Superstar. But there's Edge dealing the first blow of the match. Remember two weeks ago on SmackDown, Edge successful against the number one contender for the world title, Austin Theory. We'll see Theory in action later tonight against Drew McIntyre. But as we were about to mention, Edge successful in a matchup against Theory. But after the match really told the story, Randy Orton ambushing the Rated R Superstar. And not just any normal ambush, grabbing a ladder out from underneath the ring and smashing it over the skull of Edge. That is how deep and personal and downright violent things have gotten between Edge and Randy Orton. Which is really comes to no surprise. Remember last year at Survivor Series, these two men met inside Hell in the Cell, one of the most dangerous and absolutely brutal Hell in the Cell matches we have ever witnessed. Randy Orton got the win on that night. As we mentioned last time, these two men went one-on-one. -on -one. Last month on SmackDown, Edge picked up the victory. And now they're past cross again here at SummerSlam. Edge is hot so far over Randy Orton. This has been brewing, not just over the last couple of weeks or the last month, but quite frankly, for years. First time we saw Edge and Randy Orton one-on-one, -on -one, you gotta go back to 2004 here in the WWE. And how many battles have Edge and Orton had inside of that squared circle? Hence the reason for the Fight Forever tagline between Edge and Randy Orton. And although it's a nice, pretty tagline, you can put it on a T-shirt if you want, there is nothing pretty about the issues between Orton and Edge. Orton trying to get back into this matchup. Edge was hot out of the gate in the early going to no surprise. Fired up as the Rated R Superstar. But Randy Orton as cold and calculated as ever. Looking to slow the pace down here in Levi Stadium. I want to thank you for joining us live tonight for the biggest party yet. SummerSlam. Back inside Levi Stadium for the first time since 2015 at WrestleMania that year. We are back in the Bay Area tonight for one of the biggest summer slams of all time. Edge down and out. Randy Orton on his tail right now. Both these men were successful last year at the SummerSlam event. Randy Orton defeating Bobby Lashley on that night. And what about Edge main event at SummerSlam last year? and a winning effort against the phenomenal AJ Styles to become the WWE Champion. So much has changed over the last 12 months and plus, and now Orton and Edge find themselves intertwined again, a part of the SmackDown roster these days. And now here at SummerSlam, big time counter by Edge, nice scoop and a slam. You saw how Randy Orton slowed the pace of the match down, but Edge looking to rev up the engine here tonight. Face first goes Orton, now Edge off the middle buckle, goes for the midsection spear, and he got him. Edge loves utilizing that variation of the spear, not the same trajectory nor oomph behind it as that normal spear that he hits from the mat, but still an awesome maneuver to certainly damage Randy Orton's ribcage tonight. 
or inside upon the top but not having none of it, none of it excuse me whatever edge had in mind Randy Orton not interested in those whereabouts and there's some vintage Randy Orton inside the middle of that ring now Orton gonna look to continue the offense muscling up the rated R superstar big hangman's neck breaker by the apex predator and now's where Orton starts to go to that place starts to pick apart his opponent Edge is down and out, and Randy Orton's going to make him pay for taking away the world championship, at least in his mind, last month at Money in the Bank. The cold stomps of the Viper. One right to the chest. Or shall I say the heart of Edge into the cover. And only a two. Orton knows how tough Edge is, the amount of battles these men have had over the years. Oh, Randy Orton, RKO! Out of nowhere in the early going of this matchup. Or not interested in going the distance with the Rated R Superstar, as a matter of fact is. Edge got up, got caught with the RKO, but luckily for Edge, Orton struck a little early in this matchup. And the Rated R Superstar still got a lot of fight left in him. The question is, how much did that RKO take out of Edge as the fight gets taken to the outside? And the vintage neck breaker and Randy Orton starting to come unglued. Edge might have kicked out, but it may have only lit the adrenaline under Randy Orton to inflict more damage, more punishment, and make this a brutal suffering here tonight at SummerSlam for Edge. Orton missed on the knee there. Let's see if Edge can get back into this. Oh, wait a minute here. The Rated R Superstar going for the Canadian Destroyer, and he lands it into the cover. And that may do it, only a one count. And that just shows you the toughness and the resilience of Randy Orton. A one count off that Canadian Destroyer. Orton on the top rope. This is what Edge was presumably looking for a few moments ago. Frankensteiner and dead center of the canvas goes the Viper. Edge starting to pick up the pace, starting to get things going. And now Edge, execution into the cover. And that may be all she wrote. Not just yet as Randy Orton pops the shoulder off the canvas. What a matchup to kick things off in Levi Stadium. This is what SummerSlam is all about. One of the biggest events of the WWE calendar. And no doubt about it, the biggest party of the summer. Not able to put Randy Orton away with that execution, but Edge going to keep the foot on the gas pedal. Randy Orton, he may, may not know where he is right now. Oh, wait a minute. What's the Rated R Superstar got in mind? Going to meet Randy Orton on the middle buckle and a swinging neck breaker. And if the execution didn't do it, that may do it. But Randy Orton again survives. San Francisco coming unglued as Edge gets taken to the outside by Orton. Edge, a Hall of Famer, Randy Orton, no doubt a first ballot Hall of Famer one day. And these two men, all these years later, still leaving everything in the kitchen sink inside the squared circle. Edge with the spear, out of nowhere. But Randy Orton kicks out. What a matchup we are witnessing here at SummerSlam. Back upon their arrival to the squared circle, Edge caught Orton with an emphatic spear. But Randy Orton survives, and the matchup rolls on. These two men, they're gonna walk back into that locker room, win, lose, or draw, and say, follow that, because these two SmackDown superstars absolutely throwing live rounds at each other to kick things off. One RKO didn't do it. One spear didn't do it. A testament to the toughness of these two men. As the match continues, Randy Orton gets taken off his feet. And Edge, his wheels are spinning and he's heading to the top rope. And dropping the elbow to the heart of the Viper. And will that do it? And Orton survives again. What is it going to take to keep one of these two men down for the three count tonight at SummerSlam? Randy Orton with a reversal there, trying to get Edge off his neck, at least for the moment. Oh, wait a minute. Double clotheslines. Edge goes for one. Orton with the duck in the slam. 
And just like that, a snap of the fingers. Momentum back on the side of the Apex Predator. Randy Orton again. Looking to stomp the life out of the Rated R Superstar. Make him pay for his sins. Oh, wait a minute. Orton in the corner. Wind it up for that punt kick. And Edge may be seeing stars. But Randy Orton, unfortunately, so infuriated with his anger towards Edge, so blinded by his hatred, not watching the ring awareness, and Edge unintentionally saved by the ropes. And Orton now into the cover off the knee. And Edge gets the shoulder up just in the nick of time. Randy Orton now goes and drops an elbow of his own. What a match. That might have been in a moment ago. Orton with that Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look at Edge. Almost stuck the victory there. How close was that? Oh, Randy Orton. Don't piss off the Apex Predator. Edge, as we mentioned, may have unintentionally survived because of that foot underneath the bottom rope. But unfortunately... Oh, he might just be running off adrenaline right now. Randy Orton's pretty fired up, and Edge with the DDT. Now, how much does the Rated R Superstar still have left in the tank as Randy Orton with another reversal? And down goes Edge again. Oh, wait a minute. We're looking to put the final nail in the coffin. A second punk kick. And that'll do it. Randy Orton laying to rest the Rated R Superstar at least for tonight in Levi Stadium at SummerSlam. One hell of a matchup to kick things off between these two SmackDown superstars. I don't know if tonight settled the issues, but Randy Orton certainly getting the last laugh when it comes to Sunday night, August the 20th. Here is your winner. The last time these two met inside of the square circle, last month on SmackDown, it was Edge leaving with his hand raised high. But after the recent issues that Randy Orton took with the Rated R Superstar, he came into SummerSlam with a game plan, and he executed it to an apex perfection. Like him or not, Randy Orton gets the job done in a bruising matchup between a Hall of Famer and a future Hall of Famer here tonight at SummerSlam. The question is, what is next for that cold-hearted apex predator, the Viper, Randy Orton? Yesterday afternoon in Hammerstein Ballroom in the middle of Manhattan, New York, we kicked off the 2023 Cruiserweight Classic. The replay is available right now on the No Nation Gaming YouTube channel. And want to give a shout out to all of our brand new channel members, specifically Jack Ka and so many others. Hit the join button down below, become a channel member. And we'll be live with the Cruiserweight Classic yet again for the next seven weeks, every Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern time. What a night it was last night in Hammerstein Ballroom. Johnny Gargano advancing over Akira Tozawa and Dominic and Rey Mysterio. The Mysterio family colliding in the main event with an absolutely phenomenal, emotional class between the father and son duo. And in the end, Dominic Mysterio able to outlast his father and punch his ticket to the quarterfinals of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. But it is time to determine the Intercontinental Champion, and here comes a man who knows all about the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. It's where his WWE career kicked off back in 2016, and Cedric Alexander knows that division very well. A former Cruiserweight Champion, a former World Tag Team Champion, but tonight, the biggest opportunity of Cedric Alexander's career. He has been climbing the ranks of Monday Night Raw, all year long he has took on some of the best of them 
from Randy Orton to Rob Van Dam. He has defeated some of the best of them. Carmelo Hayes to qualify for this matchup tonight. A big upset against Kevin Owens a number of weeks ago. We have seen the rise, the fall, and the rise again of Cedric Alexander. And tonight, the biggest opportunity of his career, the opportunity that he's been waiting for all year long. But here comes the defiant L.A. Knight, the Intercontinental Champion who five weeks ago at Money in the Bank dethroned the Invincible Ilya Dragunov to win the gold. L.A. Knight has already retained the championship that is around his waist in a Money in the Bank rematch against Dragunov a number of weeks ago on Raw. But now L.A. Knight pushes forward and looks ahead to this task tonight. Cedric Alexander, no doubt, a deserving challenger for the Intercontinental Championship. And whether you like LA Knight's egotistical attitude or not, the loudmouth himself, there is no knocking his efforts inside of the squared circle. He has produced results all summer long. But the question remains, will LA Knight continue to produce said results here tonight at SummerSlam? Or is tonight the night that we enter an age of Alexander on Monday Night Raw? The first championship of six set to be decided here at the biggest party of the summer. Levi Stadium already rocking. Let's send things out of the ring for your official match introductions. Introducing the challenger from Charlotte, North Carolina, weighing in at 200 pounds, Cedric And his opponent, from Hagerstown, Maryland, weighing in at 230 pounds, he is the WWE Intercontinental Champion, L.A. Knight. Here we go, the stage is set, Levi Stadium, San Francisco, California, for the first of six championships set to be decided. LA Knight defends the prestigious Intercontinental Gold against Cedric Alexander. Last year at SummerSlam, that very Intercontinental Championship changed hands when Butch became the Intercontinental Champ for the very first time of his two reigns in his career, defeating Drew McIntyre and Sheamus in a triple threat match. Will we see a new champion here tonight in Levi Stadium? Cedric Alexander been waiting for this opportunity, scratching and clawing, climbing the ranks of Monday Night Raw and looking to make the most of it here tonight. Alexander, nice takedown. Neck breaker on the follow-up to LA Knight. Throughout the summer, LA Knight has earned not one but two victories over Ilya Dragunov, as we mentioned, with the gold on the line. We've also seen him defeat the likes of Rick Boogs, Rob Van Dam, just some of the names that LA Knight has picked up some W's against throughout June and July, and into August on Monday Night Raw. But does he have it in him to keep down Cedric Alexander tonight? Alexander has been red hot. We talked about the upset victory against Kevin Owens. Five weeks ago on Monday Night Raw, a victory against The Miz as well. And just two weeks ago on the red brand, becoming the number one contender defeating Carmelo Hayes. One of the big questions all week long, the WWE Universe has been speculating on as well as Cedric Alexander's loss, however, this past Monday night, play in to the result here this evening. Wait a minute, we'll talk more about that in a second. LA Knight getting sent to the outside, very strategically by Alexander. And Cedric's got something in mind. Wheels are spinning through the sky. Tope Suicida, and LA Knight gets sent, rammed right into the barricade. Alexander came to play tonight. He has run over the game book time and time again. Now it's time to execute. LA Knight's got to avoid said maneuvers, but Alexander is all over the champion. Alexander bringing the fight back inside the squared circle. As we were about to mention a moment ago, you remember this past Monday night in Las Vegas, on Raw, Cedric Alexander alongside the man he was once tag team champions with and Shelton Benjamin taking on Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn in that tag team matchup. Wait a minute, LA Knight. I'm gonna steal the victory here. Only a one count. LA Knight, I don't know if he knew, if, or at least thought he was gonna get the victory there or was just trying to get Alexander off his back for a moment. 
Nonetheless, this past Monday on a Raw, Sami Zayn pinning Cedric Alexander in the midst of that tag team matchup. And people have been speculating all week long that that may play into the psyche of Alexander. But so far, I don't know if that's really bothering Cedric Alexander as he's been all over the champion, but finally LA Knight slows down the challenger, at least for a moment. Cedric Alexander looks pretty focused in my eyes, but will he be able to outlast the champion from bell to bell? LA Knight just trying to slow down Alexander. Similar to what we saw in our opening contest. Alexander fired up, coming out off the bell in this matchup. And the champion, LA Knight, just trying to control the pace with the challenger. Neck breaker, and down goes Alexander. To retain the championship here, Alexander saw that from a mile away. Foot underneath the bottom ropes. LA Knight's got to re strategize. Off the middle, buckle, and dropping the axe hammer. We've seen the rise of LA Knight as well over the last couple of months on Raw. Remember he was drafted to SmackDown back in November. Had a bit of a rocky start here in the main roster. Suffered some big time losses to the defiant LA Knight. But ever since he got drafted to Raw back in March, we have seen Knight really take the red brand by storm. Owns victories over Shinsuke Nakamura. Ilya Dragunov, as we mentioned. Mr. Monday Night, Rob Van Dam. And you remember back when LA Knight originally won the number one contendership for the Intercontinental title was back on July the 3rd, eight-man battle royal on Monday Night Raw. The last man eliminated in that matchup was Cedric Alexander by the hands of LA Knight. So a little bit of history between these two men. LA Knight certainly capitalized on that opportunity, won the gold at Money in the Bank. And can Cedric Alexander capitalize on the opportunity that he earned against Carmelo Hayes a number of weeks ago? LA Knight right now just picking apart the challenger Shot for shot. Now climbing the middle buckle again. This time awaiting Alexander to get to the soles of his boots. And dropping the axe hammer. Nothing pretty but certainly effective by the champion. Only a one count there. LA Knight's going to have to push forward and throw some heavy shots at Cesar Alexander. To keep this fired up challenger down tonight. I think it's important for LA Knight as well to really take the wind out of the sails of not just Cedric Alexander, but the crowd here tonight at San Francisco. Jam-packed Levi Stadium behind Cedric Alexander. If he grounds Alexander, he doesn't have to worry about this audience rallying behind him, but Cedric Alexander with other plans off the springboard. LA Knight on spaghetti legs and he gets caught. Spanish fly. Alexander not going for the cover just yet. He knows the wars LA Knight was in with Ilya Dragunov. Told the story of the champion. And he knows the toughness and the resilience. Try to keep the champion down for good. Now into the cover. And I already got the two. But not enough to keep LA Knight down just yet. Close call. Almost had a new Intercontinental Champion here at SummerSlam. Now Cedric going behind. Could have been going for the lumbar check. LA Knight, however, wait a minute, schoolboy. Hey, referee, you might have a handful of tights. Well, either way, Alexander able to pop the shoulders off the canvas, at least for a moment. And now LA Knight going for that burning hammer. And face first goes Alexander. And Alexander kicks out. What a close call for the challenger there. Almost seeing the opportunity go up in smoke. Central trying to get fired up again. Now LA Knight, I should say not show LA Knight the fatigue, the tiredness starting to set in as we get into some later rounds in this match. Knight trying to slow down Alexander. You see in a snap of the fingers, Alexander is able to rev up the pace. Ever since that springboard, Cedric was in control. And now LA Knight looking to take matters into his own hands off the top. And what if it could have been going for the superplex, but Cedric Alexander avoids it. From the top, dropping the elbow. Cover to become the new champion. Oh, and another close call. LA Knight gets the shoulder up. Cedric Alexander half a second away from winning the Intercontinental Championship. Looked like he was going for the Spanish fly again, but the defiant champion had it scouted. Great contest here between these two Monday Night Raw superstars. In right in Levi Stadium. LA Knight going behind, just disrespecting the challenger, getting to the psyche of Cedric Alexander. Now stacking him up dead center of the ring. 
goes for the knee again. Nothing too pretty about LA Knight's offense tonight. He's keeping it simple, he's keeping it effective, and he's got Cedric Alexander on the run. Dropping the axe hammer again in this matchup. And he hit in the right spot. With those open palms, it's enough to knock out the opponent. I guarantee it. Cedric getting sent into the ring by hands of the defiant champion. And LA Knight taking his time right now. We're going to make a statement to the Monday Night Raw locker room on Cedric's behalf. But Alexander, however, don't disrespect a man who has worked this hard for his opportunity. Into the ropes, LA Knight misses and he goes down. Cedric Alexander has got the opportunity in the palm of his hands. Oh, but another counter by the Intercontinental Champion. Now Cedric again going to the outside, trying to catch a breather, trying to slow down this matchup. LA Knight, I think, is shook right now as Cedric Alexander is starting to rally San Francisco, California, behind the challenger. LA Knight taking a moment, but he better turn around because the challenger's on his tail. Alexander might have caught some of the referee by accident there. Referee better shake off the cobwebs. Cedric going for the cover. Oh, referee's definitely a little shook it up. Into the cover. LA Knight got the shoulder up at least for the moment. Wait a minute. BFT, blood force trauma. LA Knight with Cedric Alexander seeing stars. And that'll do it. LA Knight knocks out the challenger just long enough to retain the Intercontinental Championship. A great effort, but not enough for L.A. Knight. Here is your winner, and still WWE Intercontinental Champion, L.A. Knight. Cedric Alexander gave it his all, but tonight, L.A. Knight is leaving the victor, and still the Intercontinental Champion, and dare I say one of the faces of Monday Night Raw. Speaking of the red brand, coming up next here in Levi Stadium, a personal vendetta between the prize fighter Kevin Owens and the beast incarnate Brock Lesnar. No holds barred as these two men continue the collision course. Once and for all, they battle it out. Up next, here in San Francisco. For months, we have witnessed unauthorized conflict and engagement in war between a beast and a prize fighter. It all began in Minneapolis, a night etched in the annals of WWE history, a night that would change the trajectory of two men forever. In Brock Lesnar's hunt for gold, he steamrolled over four other competitors to claim the right to challenge next. However, the path to the WWE Championship is ruthless, and sometimes it leaves casualties in its wake. One of those casualties was Kevin Owens. With frustration boiling by this defeat, Owens and Zayn, longtime allies and no strangers to controversy, refused to stand idly by as Lesnar seized his opportunity. They were determined to carve their own path, regardless of the consequences. Their vendetta manifested in chaos, ambushes, and calculated strikes. Owens and Zayn set out to dismantle both Lesnar and WWE Champion Matt Riddle creating a storm of havoc that reverberated through Monday Night Raw. But it was Kevin Owens who dealt the most devastating blow, an ambush that left the Beast Incarnate sidelined for weeks, nursing wounds both physically and psychologically. Owens walked down a dangerous path and refused to look back as he pursued his own championship aspirations. Just as Owens believed, he had vanished his foe, the specter of Brock Lesnar resurfaced in a ruthless, unexpected manner. A vicious and calculated F5 onto concrete to Kevin Owens' closest ally sent a chilling message. Brock Lesnar was back and seeking retribution. The war had escalated. Two titans locked in a struggle of supremacy, neither willing to yield. A vendetta born out of violence and vengeance. A clash of wills that have consumed them both. Now. At SummerSlam, all bets are off. This battlefield knows no bounds, no countouts, no disqualifications. It's a battleground where survival is paramount. No holds barred. 
The name says it all. Owen's bridge is burned, and there's no retreat, only a collision of chaos, retribution, and unrelenting fury. The storm has been unleashed, and it will reach its conclusion at SummerSlam. Owens versus Lesnar, where anything goes and every action carries dire consequences. Anything goes, no countouts, no disqualifications, absolutely no holds barred. Kevin Owens made his bed. Now he's got to sleep in it. The following contest is a no holds barred match. Making his way to the ring from Marieville, Quebec, Canada, weighing in at 266 pounds, Kevin Owens. It all started at Backlash in April when Brock Lesnar eliminated Kevin Owens from a number one contenders match to the WWE Championship. Kevin Owens took personal issue with that, and in the weeks leading, ambushed Brock Lesnar alongside Sami Zayn any chance they got the opportunity. After Brock Lesnar was unsuccessful in his efforts to become champion, Kevin Owens taking matters into his own hands, ambushing Lesnar in the parking lot, and all roads have now led to SummerSlam tonight. Don't burn the bridge if you plan to go back. And Kevin Owens has no choice but to face the fury, face the consequences. Here comes the pain, the beast, the conqueror, the alpha male of our species, Brock Lesnar. And his opponent from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing in at 295 pounds, Brock Lesnar. If Brock Lesnar wasn't fired up and pissed off heading into this no holds barred match, just look at what happened six nights ago in Sin City on Monday Night Raw. Lesnar and Kevin Owens, a brawl that must have ensued in the backstage area, spilled out onto the stage, and KO left Lesnar laying with a stunner on the steel. Brock Lesnar has been salivating at this moment all summer long, plotting his retribution, waiting to get his revenge on the prize fighter Kevin Owens. Tonight, no disqualifications, no countouts, no holds barred, and nothing stopping Brock Lesnar from instituting a monstrous beating on Kevin Owens. But take nothing away from Kevin Owens. He has been in there with the best. He has beaten the best. And Kevin Owens has left Brock Lesnar laying on more than one occasion. The bell has sounded and we are underway here in No Holds Barred. You heard San Francisco, the chance of Suplex City. It was in this very building all those years ago where Suplex City was born at WrestleMania. Brock Lesnar, the beast cometh tonight. And Lesnar is heading to the outside and he's grabbed a kendo stick because the rules absolutely encourage it. Kevin Owens doing his homework, grabbing a hold of that kendo stick and he's using it against the beast incarnate. Oh my goodness, nothing the referee can do to stop this tonight. And dropping the senton. Kevin Owens going for the victory early, trying to get out of dodge in the early moments of this contest. Owens has got to know better. He's got to come in with a, an A plan, a B plan, a C plan, all the way to Z when you're in there with the Beast Incarnate. Lesnar's down, but you know the Beast isn't out for good. And Kevin Owens instituting the wood in this matchup. Owens bringing out that table. And Brock Lesnar, however, is up and at him. And Kevin Owens was lying in wait. Sending Brock into the barricade again. We better get out of harm's way if need be, because Lesnar and Kevin Owens will run over anything in their path on a collision course to destroy each other, and Lesnar's got his eye on the announce table. Kevin Owens 
has put Brock Lesnar through the table before with a stunner months ago on Monday Night Raw. Lesnar has not forgotten about all the ambushes that Kevin Owens instilled upon him. And now Lesnar's going back underneath the ring and he's grabbed the steel chair and Kevin Owens, however, not gonna oblige the San Francisco's once. Gonna take matters into his own hands, not interested in that steel chair. This fight can go absolutely anywhere. No count outs as we mentioned. Nothing stopping Owens and Lesnar from absolute destruction tonight. Oh, wait a minute. Owens back underneath the ring and he's pulled out yet another table. One wasn't good enough for KO. He asked for an ounce. Brock Lesnar coming up behind Owens and grabbing a hold of that steel chair. Lesnar has got something in mind with the cold hard steel, but Kevin Owens for the second time avoids it. Owens are loading on the beast, but Lesnar from behind. Well, realistically, Brock Lesnar doesn't need the weapons, doesn't need the rules of this matchup to inflict any kind of revenge, but it's certainly an added dessert on top. And the chair to Lesnar. Kevin Owens down and out, and the beast in it has been waiting on this moment for months. Kevin Owens really in pain. But as we mentioned, as he walked down the aisle, don't make the bed that you don't want to sleep in. And Kevin Owens absolutely wished this upon himself tonight. Owens nice counter and again going for the early pinfall. Rope breaks not instituted in this matchup. Only a one count there. Brock Lesnar is came prepared for war tonight. We have not seen Lesnar in action since May the 14th. We went one-on-one -on -one with Matt Riddle at Vengeance in an absolute war. And now back inside the ring here at Levi Stadium, or shall I say on the outskirts, where Kevin Owens is looking to meet him to pick it hero over the top, and down goes the Beast Incarnate. Kevin Owens came out swinging. You may not like Kevin Owens, you certainly don't have to like the actions. And you can absolutely look upon Kevin Owens and his actions as the reasons why we're here tonight, but take nothing away from the intestinal fortitude of the prize fighter, the toughness and the will to succeed. Kevin Owens has had quite the year to say the least of pissing people off, but at the end of the day, getting the best of them in the end. They were back at WrestleMania, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn defeated Edge and AJ Styles in a big time tag team matchup in front of AZ Thousand Strong. Now Brock Lesnar grabbing a hold of Owens and just a bare shot right to the gut. Knock the wind out of your opponent. Take away the breath. You can't breathe, you can't fight. Oh, Kevin Owens, he might have poked Lesnar in the eye there. This thing has turned into a Pier 6 brawl here at ringside at Levi Stadium. But again, Lesnar Maybe grabbing a hold of the beard of KO, using it against him, and just looking to knock the wind out of Owens. This thing is starting to look like human demolition derby at ringside. Weapons ablaze, bodies flying left and right. And Owens getting Lesnar off him and finally takes him off his feet. Lots of lefts and rights being thrown, but Kevin Owens elects for the boots to change the trajectory of this brawl. Lesnar down, at least for the moment. Kevin Owens went to the well with that senton. Nobody home, and now the Beast sending KO into the barrier. Now wait a minute, Lesnar. Lesnar grabbing a hold of the steel steps. Kevin Owens, look out! Brock Lesnar damn sure doesn't need steel steps in his grasp, but it will certainly aid him in his pursuit of instincting revenge against Kevin Owens tonight. Lesnar just continuing to throw lefts and throw rights. And with every shot, getting back that vengeance that Lesnar has waited for all summer long. Remember when Brock Lesnar resurfaced on Monday Night Raw and ambushed to Sami Zayn, f 5 him in the parking garage, costing Kevin Owens a spot in the Money in the Bank ladder match last month. 
Ever since then, feels like week after week, Lesnar and Kevin Owens have sought each other out and have instituted these brawls. But tonight is where it ends here at SummerSlam. One man's gonna leave the winner and one man will leave with their head hanging in shame. You notice that table getting set up. And now back on the other side of ringside, Kevin Owens grabbing a hold of Lesnar. And I think he's got his eyes on the table he set up earlier. But Brock not interested in Kevin Owens' affairs. Lesnar, I think, might want to use that table against Kevin Owens. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Lesnar! The F5 through the table at ringside. And picking Kevin Owens up to his feet, sending him inside the squared circle. Pinfall can only take place between the ropes. Oh, and somehow Kevin Owens kicked out. Kevin Owens wants to defeat Brock Lesnar, wants to embarrass Brock Lesnar so bad that he's gonna deal with the pain in this moment and live on the fight. Not many people would survive an F5 through the wood of the table whether you like Kevin Owens or not, you gotta give him his due respect in that moment. You see Owens heading to the outside, trying to create some distance, catch a breath against the Beast Incarnate, who's controlled the majority of the last few minutes of this no-holds-barred match. Been sent into the announce table, rib cage first. Now Lesnar head first off the bare table. Gonna caught the corner as well. Kevin Owens has got to get back into this matchup if he wants to survive against the Beast Incarnate. However, Brock is still alive. The Beast still throwing strikes. Oh no. On the outside with that same suplex that eliminated Kevin Owens from that number one contenders match back at Backlash. The maneuver in the moment that started it all. Kevin Owens still on his feet. Lesnar on his tail, the prize fighter might have goaded him in that time and sending Lesnar right into the barricade. It's one thing to knock the beast off its feet. It's a whole nother thing to keep him there as Kevin Owens looking to bring Lesnar to his own version of Sue Plex City. See, Kevin Owens has slowed down a little bit ever since that F5. Damage certainly done. But now Lesnar on the shoulders, and the neck breaker takes down Lesnar. Only for a moment there, Brock Lesnar is still alive, somehow, some way. It stands as a testament to the toughness of the Beast Incarnate. What is Kevin Owens going to have to do to not only survive, but defeat Brock Lesnar here tonight? Owens grabbing a hold again, putting Lesnar up against the table. Lesnar's fighting out between a rock and a hard place, and Kevin Owens with another elbow strike. And now Lesnar ragdolling Owens across to the other side of ringside. We expected nothing less but a brawl between these two fighters. We said it earlier on, but I think even now, if you look upon the grand scheme of things, this certainly looks like human demolition derby, an absolute car wreck in and out of the ring. And Kevin Owens with a big boot on Lesnar. Brock Lesnar down, at least for the moment, and now KO has got that table. The one already backfired against him. I don't know. Oh, Kevin Owens, he might have had enough. He might not want to risk it with the second table, sending it to the outside. Oh, but now he sends Lesnar back to the outside. Kevin Owens may be cooking up some plan here. He better watch, because Brock Lesnar is still stirring. Tried to drop the hammer, but Lesnar playing cat and mouse with Kevin Owens right now. Owens grabbing the table. Lesnar grabbing the steps. Something's got to give here at SummerSlam. And back to the outside again. And sending Lesnar into the barrier. Kevin Owens has got something in mind. It didn't work out the first time at that table. Hoping it comes around the second. Lesnar using the barricades to stay on his feet right now as Kevin Owens is starting to catch up to Brock. When it comes to the damage being done in a senton of the lower back. Squashing Lesnar between the body and the floor of Levi Stadium. Oh no. Lesnar being laid upon that table. And Kevin Owens, what does Kevin Owens got in mind? Owens is heading to the top rope. 
Brock Lesnar, oh Lesnar moving out of the way and Kevin Owens crashing and burning at ringside. Luckily for him, the table went with Lesnar upon Lesnar rolling off. However, Owens taking Brock off his feet. Kevin Owens is not satisfied, grabbing the wood of the table again. But doesn't work out the first time. Made change the second time around, and Brock once again on the wood of the table. Kevin Owens going back to the well. Will it work out? Frog splash to the beast and torn it through the table. My goodness, the beast broken in half. Owens is dead, or excuse me, Lesnar is down. Owens is stirring, and he's clearing off the other announce table. How the hell is Brock Lesnar still breathing at the moment? Especially able to get Kevin Owens off him with a knee. The beast is inhumane. Now Lesnar sending Kevin Owens inside the squared circle. The majority of this contest has been contested on the outside. Now Brock, all counter by Kevin Owens, who grabs a hold, but there's another counter by Lesnar. Brock Lesnar may be feeling a sense of urgency out of that table that he just went through moments ago. And a big time clothesline by Lesnar. Owens down, Owens out. Better wake up before it's too late because Brock Lesnar is starting to kick things into high gear. Lesnar has been salivating for this moment all summer long. And I think he's got one more left in the tank. Lesnar with the F. Five to Kevin Owens. Inside the ring, into the cover. And into the promised land for the Beast incarnate. No holds board. Absolutely lives up to its very name. A Pier 6 brawl in the middle of Levi Stadium. And the last man standing is none other than the alpha male, Brock Lesnar. Here is your winner, Brock Lesnar. Well, Kevin Owens wanted to take care of the Beast Incarnate since April the 11th at Backlash. But all summer long, Lesnar salivated for this moment, waiting to get his hands, exact his retribution on the prize fighter. And tonight, Sunday, August the 20th, was that moment for the Beast Incarnate. Brock Lesnar successful here at SummerSlam. The next time we come your way for not one, but two live premiere events is 27 nights from tonight as we kick off a huge September doubleheader weekend. First, on Saturday, September 16th, we bring to you a Friday Night Smackdown exclusive event, No Mercy, live from the CFG Bank Arena in Baltimore, Maryland. And then just 24 hours later, the Monday Night Raw crew headlined the exclusive Unforgiven event taking place on September 17th from the All-State Arena in Chicago, Illinois. It's a September doubleheader, a live premiere weekend featuring the Cruiserweight Classic, SmackDown's No Mercy in Baltimore, and Raw's Unforgiven in Chicago. Well, it is time for our next championship to be defended here in Levi Stadium in San Francisco. The World Tag Team titles are on the line. And who is going to be heading into their brand exclusive pay-per-view next month? Whether it be the team from SmackDown in the OC or the team from Raw in the Judgment Day. AJ Styles accompanying the big LG Luke Gallows and Machine Gun Carl Anderson as that duo behind the phenomenal one has been red hot since their return to World Wrestling Entertainment alongside Styles back in May. Imperium, Maxima Male Models, Los Lotharios, the Viking Raiders, just some of the names that Gallows and Anderson had stepped up to and stepped aside. And now tonight, Anderson and Gallows with their huge opportunity 
against Monday Night Raw's Finn Balor and Damian Priest of the Judgment Day to try to become the WWE World Tag Team Champions. World traveled veterans in all three of these men. But can Anderson and Gallows get it done when the lights are on bright here in Levi Stadium? Remember just 48 hours ago on SmackDown, Carl Anderson and Finn Balor tearing down the house. It was an awesome matchup. But in the end, Carl Anderson keeping the OC's momentum alive with the victory over the Prince. How will that fare to the OC's momentum? And the Judgment Day Psyche here tonight at SummerSlam. You want to talk about a dominating trio? You may look at the OC, but you want to talk about dominating and certainly intimidating. Look no further than the Nightmare Rhea Ripley, Mrs. Money in the Bank herself, and the two men in company, the World Tag Team Champions, the Prince Finn Balor and the Archer of Infamy, Damian Priest. Balor and Priest have taken Monday Night Raw by storm running over teams like the Brawling Brutes and the Judgment Day have been on a roll. But will that roll continue here at SummerSlam when the gold is on the line? They have retained those titles in recent history against Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford of the Street Profits. Remember when they won the gold back in June at King of the Ring, defeating Mustafa Ali and Ricochet. But will the result be the same for the team in the black and purple tonight? Will Balor and Priest's momentum continue on Monday Night Raw? Will they continue their hostile takeover of the red brand? Or do the OC got the number of Balor, Priest, and company? And will we be leaving San Francisco with new WWE World Tag Team Champions? Two of the best teams in all of WWE set to lock horns over that prestigious gold. Here tonight in Levi Stadium, Let's send things down to the ring for your official match introductions. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the World Tag Team Championship. Introducing the challengers at a combined weight of 505 pounds. Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, the And their opponents at a combined weight of 439 pounds. They are the World Tag Team Champions, Finn Balor and Damian Priest. The Judgment Day. What has been a red hot night of action already here in San Francisco and our second championship set to be decided. Enter a promotional matchup for the WWE World Tag Team Titles. Anderson and Gallows, the OC from SmackDown. Balor and Priest, the Judgment Day from Raw. It is not about brand supremacy, it is about the gold that the Judgment Day currently possesses. The bell has sounded and we are underway here at SummerSlam. A lot more writing on this matchup than it may seem. Of course, a ton of history between Anderson Gallows and the Prince Finn Balor. World traveled veterans of the ring, spent a lot of time on the same side of the ring in Japan years ago. But now they stand across from each other tonight. One of the most high profile matches here tonight at SummerSlam for the prestigious tag team titles and Luke Gallows hot out of the gate. A bigger, stronger competitor working over the Prince Finn Balor right now. As we mentioned moments ago, Anderson picking up that victory over Balor on SmackDown. You gotta wonder how that's playing into the psyche of the Judgment Day tonight as Luke Gallows coming out swinging, looking for the early victory here. Only a one count. Possibly trying to get into the mind as well of Finn Balor. Luke Gallows, one of the strongest members of the SmackDown roster. We're seeing that strength firsthand right now, unloading on Balor. Gallows and Anderson have not suffered a defeat since joining SmackDown yet again back in May, as we mentioned. Imperium, the Viking Raiders, two of the top teams on SmackDown, just two of the teams that have fallen to the OC in recent memory. As 
Carl Anderson gets tagged in, and we're back where we were 48 hours ago in Sacramento on SmackDown. I'm sure Balor jumping at the bit to get that victory back. A little bit of payback against Machine Gun Carl Anderson. Um, don't take your eye off the ball. Anderson, small package on Balor. Remember how he defeated him two days ago. Balor missed off that coup de gras. Anderson came from behind with the roll-up, and it was all she wrote. Carl Anderson looking to have lightning strike twice tonight in Levi Stadium. But not yet. Balor still fresh in this matchup. And one thing we can say about Balor and Priest is as the time goes on, not only as tag team champions, but just as a duo on Monday Night Raw, they have just continued to get better, continue to get stronger, continue to push the pace and go the limits in these matches when the tag team titles are on the line. I expect nothing different here tonight. Expect the best out of the Judgment Day as Priest gets tagged in, and there's some of that double team offense out of the Judgment Day. An archer of infamy, Damian Priest, into the cover now, looking for the early victory of himself. Not just yet. Last time Damian Priest was in front of a crowd like this was back at WrestleMania, right before he decided to jump ship and join Finn Balor. Remember, Damian Priest's former tag team partner, Dominic Dijakovic. Those two men stood side by side in the finals of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic earlier this year. Failed to accomplish what they sought out to do, and that's win the tournament. Ever since that loss at WrestleMania, Damian Priest, now alongside Finn Balor, has become a completely different competitor from bell to bell. Now the tag made to Finn, looking to pick apart Machine Gun Carl Anderson here, and Balor muscling up the opponent, and Carl Anderson crash and burn off the canvas. But early on in this matchup, Luke Gallo is still fresh as a daisy, not gonna allow the OC to leave empty-handed. AJ Styles, another man who knows Finn Balor very well, in the corner of his boys tonight. We gotta watch the X Factor ringside and Mrs. Money in the Bank of the Nightmare, Rhea Ripley. He was known to lend a hand, if need be, to her boys in the Judgment Day. Carl Anderson back on the upper hand. As we've talked about, and it's been well documented on SmackDown, Anderson and Gallows, they have held Tag Team Championship here in WWE before, but they've held gold all around the world. Former New Japan Tag Team Champions, Impact Tag Team Champions, Ring of Honor, Anderson and Gallows have been in the ring with the best, they have beaten the best, they have held some of the most prestigious gold there is to win, but they're back here in WWE, and they want to do it all over again. Wait a minute, Valor coming off the top with the coup de gras early on. And that's payback for what happened on SmackDown. Luke Gallo is still standing, not going to allow the three count. But that is the maneuver that Bauer missed upon 48 hours ago and allowed Carl Anderson to get the victory. That crew of Gross might have woken up the machine gun, sending Bauer into enemy territory. Now Anderson might feel a sense of urgency to try to get going, but obviously damage done, and Bauer looking to capitalize. Anderson. Tag made to Luke Gallows, and Finn Balor charges at the big LG and takes him down with the swing blade. The confidence out of Balor tonight. Gallows trying to create some distance. Obviously has the strength and size over Finn at the moment. Now ragdolling him into the ropes and a big time clothesline. Luke Gallows trying to get things going for the Judgment Day here tonight at SummerSlam. Balor dead center of the canvas. Really controlled Carl Anderson for a few moments there, but wasn't able to get the victory. Damage done, but no three count. And Luke Gallows now trying to change the tides, but Balor sidestepping him here in the Bay Area. Gallows with another reversal. And a big time DDT, which is certainly gonna spell disaster for Balor. Well, I should say it could if he doesn't get this tag, but it looks like Luke Gallows might be allowing the tag, wants to fight Damian Priest, dead center of Levi Stadium, and Priest makes him pay for his wishes. The Archer of Infamy came out hot right there, and Luke Gallows, oh man, not many people are gonna be able to muscle up the big LG, but Damian Priest is one of them. And Gallows now fighting an uphill battle, which is a rare occurrence for the big LG. Creating a little distance, but Damian Priest, however, with the advantage, gets sidesteps by Gallows. Oh, wait a minute. Gallows looking for a little pump handle. Down goes Damian Priest. 
Gallows used that maneuver to defeat the Viking Raiders a few weeks ago, but only a one count against Damian. And now back on the shoulders, Gallows now, face first on the canvas, goes the Archer of Infamy. And that could be all. New tag team champions on the horizon, not just yet. A great tag team matchup thus far. You know, Judgment Day for Monday Night Raw and the OC from Friday Night SmackDown. That's what tag team wrestling is all about. And this is what those tag team titles mean to each and every team and the entire division across all the brands in WWE. Gallows and Anderson fought hard for this opportunity. Priest and Bauer fought hard to obtain the titles. And looking to retain them tonight. Down goes Gallows. Damian Priest making him pay for his sins. Luke Gallows is out in the middle of the canvas, or at least he was for a moment. Finn Balor now being tagged in as the Judgment Day realize it may take more to keep the OC down and out. Razor's Edge not enough, but will this crossface do the trick? Luke Gallows able to muscle the Prince off of him, create a little distance, and there's a big time kick to take Balor off his feet. Finn Balor on spaghetti legs, at least for the moment. Now Luke Gallows is trying to get back into things for the Judgment Day, excuse me, for the OC. Reversal there by Balor, but now Gallows once again sending him for a ride over the top rope. And another counter by Finn. These men know each other so well. Do Gallows, Anderson, Balor, and even AJ. But Finn Balor a different man than he used to be. That's the reason he has been so successful over the last few months here on Monday Night Raw. Damian Priest breaking things up. Anderson getting a cheap shot at on Balor. A lot of history and certainly no love loss between all these men here tonight, especially with the stakes so high. Great matchup this has been thus far. It's been an awesome night here at Levi Stadium, San Francisco, California. And so much still to be decided here tonight at SummerSlam. But who will be leaving with the WWE World Tag Team titles? Will it be the Judgment Day? Will it be the OC? Anderson's hoping it comes to the original club and a big time spy buster. But Damian Priest not even gonna allow a one count there. That is the dangers of this tag team matchup. You gotta take out not one, but two opponents in order to get the three count. Anderson going off the top, but Balor sidestepped him there. Anderson not able to capitalize off that hangman's neck breaker. Balor shaking off the cobwebs. Oh, wait a minute, going for a little 19-16. And that could do it. Oh, but the Judgment Day keep making the same mistake, leaving a man left standing, and Carl Anderson gets the shoulder up. Damian Priest might have cut off Luke Gallows in his tracks, but the machine gun's still alive and firing on all cylinders. Or at least for the moment, Balor. What a drop kick center and Anderson like a bullet into the corner and a tag main to the Archer of Infamy, hoping Damian Priest can end this matchup on a high for the Judgment Day. Oh no, oh no. South of heaven, into the cover. Gallows back in. Luke Gallows breaking up the count. Damian Priest and Finn Balor thought they had it, but it is tonight. The OC's night is the World Tag Team Championship going back to the original club. Toro Anderson and Luke Gallows have fought long and hard, not only to get back to SmackDown, not only to climb the ranks, but to possibly become Tag Team Champions yet again. And that cutter may be the answer. No. So difficult to win a match of this proportion. Four high-level athletes competing for the tag team titles. Neither team looking to leave without said gold tonight. So what tag team wrestling is all about. Priest fighting out of enemy territory. Oh man, keeping it simple yet effective there. So knock the wherewithal of Carl Anderson away. Uh, blocked by Anderson. Knee right to the rib cage. Damian Priest. Grabbing a hold back in fourth and momentum starts to go. Saw things really starting to pick up there for a moment, but after that cutter, Judgment Day's MO might be to slow things down. Oral Anderson getting ragdolled, and now on the outside, 
And Damian Priest is not afraid to take things to the air if need be. Step up over the top rope and down goes the machine gun. Damian Priest, the height and the strength of the Archer of Infamy. Carl Anderson, if he wasn't knocked out before, he may be now as Damian Priest is having his way with the machine gun at ringside. Oh, and Anderson, right now between a rock and a hard place, uses his surroundings to his advantage. Priest hits the ring post, and back inside the squared circle we go. Wait a minute, Carl Anderson's heading to the top, could have went for the pinfall there, but elects to go for some more damage. Dropping the axe hammer. And you hear San Francisco starting to come alive for one of the most favorite, I should say, famous teams in all of professional wrestling, Anderson and Gallows. And down goes Priest again. Into the cover. To win the gold and Balor breaks things up. Man, what a match. This, this may go down as the tag team match of the year here in WWE as Anderson takes care of Bauer, trying to cut the ring in half, eliminate at least one of the Judgment Day, but he turned his back on Priest, and it may have cost him. Face first goes Anderson. Dead center of the canvas, and now Damian Priest stalking his prey. Oh no, oh no, looking for the reckoning, and Coral Anderson may be knocked out cold, but Priest Better keep his eye on Gallows, who is still left standing. And quite frankly, probably still very fresh. As Coral Anderson's been picking up a lot of the load of this matchup, at least for the last number of minutes. Coral Anderson is in need of a tag. He's got to get Luke Gallows in here and try to pick things up for the OC now more than ever. That axe hammer from the top. That combination from the machine gun might have been the last this effort. A reversal there, but Damian Priest making him pay. With the cover again. And Luke Gallo is going to continue to be the X Factor in this matchup until the Judgment Day figure out the answer to the OC here tonight. Right, Priest and Balor are starting to get ticked off. This match is going into deep waters that maybe the Judgment Day weren't interested in meeting Anderson and Gallo's at. Just starting to pummel the machine gun inside of the ring, but there's a reversal. Anderson's got to capitalize though. Couple of strikes, wait a minute. Small package on Balor. You remember SmackDown? Damian Priest breaking things up too close to the Judgment Day corner. Balor's dazed, Balor's confused, and Balor's in enemy territory. Much needed tag to Luke Gallows, which may have saved the day for the OC. Big boot by the BLG. Oh, wait a minute here, wait a minute. Rhea Ripley and Jezebel taking Luke Gallo's eye off the ball and Finn Balor gonna capitalize. That may have been the OC's best chance. Might have just saw it go up in smoke thanks to the antics of the nightmare Rhea Ripley. Gallo's in the corner and Damian Priest Tagged in, the Judgment Day, working like a well-oiled machine right now. Gallows is out. Damian Priest, however, could be looking for the kill. Could be looking to go south of heaven, but Luke Gallows with the counter. What is it going to take to keep one of these two teams down tonight? Priest is in the corner and a duck. Gallows moves out of the way. Priest hits the ropes, Gallows, big time, sidewalk slam. The OC needs some much needed momentum right now, but again, Damian Priest with the counter. Oh, look at this, look at the muscle out of Damian Priest. We said it earlier, we'll say it again, very few men gonna be able to manhandle the big LG, but the Archer of Infamy has got the intestinal fortitude to do it. Duplex the Gallows, just trying to pick apart the OC, throw anything in the kitchen sink, add Anderson and Gallows to try to retain the titles tonight. 
Luke Gallows is dazed. Damian Priest trying to capitalize. Wait a minute. Still some life left in the challengers. Up on the shoulders. Gallows. Face first goes Damian Priest. Oh, but again, Rhea Ripley on the apron. Somebody get her away from ringside. And Finn Balor breaking things up, not going to allow the pinfall. Oh, wait a minute. Luke Gallo is bringing Priest to his feet. Again, muscles up. The Archer of Infamy. What is it going to take to keep one of these two teams down? Gallows needs to go for a pinfall. They gotta eliminate the other tag team partner though to allow it. Reese with another reversal. Big time Lariat. Down goes Gallows to retain the titles. Only a one. How the hell does Luke Gallows still got that fuel left in the tank after everything these two teams have been through here tonight at SummerSlam? Tag made to Bauer. Tag made to Anderson. And if these two men are going to put the final nail on each other, they're going to do it themselves. The tag team titles are on the line. Something's got to give here in Levi Stadium. You sense the end is near. You sense the fuel tank starting to end. Go to E. Who's got more left in them? Anderson Gallows. Small package on Balor, not enough. Carl Anderson. Going back to the well with what worked on SmackDown, but it's not really working out tonight as Balor now takes down the machine gun and a drop kick to the side of the dome. Classic maneuver out of the Prince. And now Finn just looking to wear down Carl Anderson here tonight at SummerSlam. Double knees. Oh, I don't know if he got all of it there. I think he did, but Balor so exhausted, not able to capitalize. Aller bringing Anderson to his feet. Swing blade. Again with the drop kick. Just going for the cover. Clearly, Total Anderson is beaten and battered. But Baller wanted to end things on his own accord. And could have grass. Gallo's breaking things up. Finn Baller going to continue to punish the machine gun as long as this match progresses. What has been. Possibly a tag team match of the year. Bowers going back to the top for the third. Two to cross. Coral Anderson is out. And that's going to do it. At some point, it becomes too much to handle. And the OC just had to throw in the towel figuratively tonight to save their own efforts. Live to fight another day against the Judgment Day who are leaving with the World Tag Team titles. But either way, I mean, what a matchup for the gold tonight here at SummerSlam. Here are your winners, and still World Tag Team Champions, Damian Priest and Finn Balor. Well, the Judgment Day continue to reign over Monday Night Raw as the gold remains on the shoulders of the Archer of Infamy and the Prince. A dangerous duo proving their worth tonight at SummerSlam, but coming up next, you want to talk about dangerous. Look no further than the 14-0 Guther, but standing across the ring from the ring general is the man looking to knock him off the top of the mountain, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Since their arrival on Friday Night SmackDown last November, Imperium's leader, Gunther, has proven to be an unstoppable force. A ring general with a mission to conquer all opposition. Back at WrestleMania, the ring general fulfilled his goal, defeating Bobby Lashley to claim his first main roster title, the United States Championship. And since then, a streak of dominance has painted a record that reads 14-0. One by one, challengers have risen, each vying to be the one who finally takes down the seemingly invincible Gunther. Wesley, AJ Styles, Rey Mysterio, the list goes on, but the undefeated streak remains intact. Amid Gunther's reign of supremacy, one man has been on a relentless quest of his own, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. 
fueled by the burning desire to once again hold championship gold. Cody came inches away from victory on Super SmackDown two months ago, pushing Guther to his limits, only to see the championship dreams narrowly slip from his grasp. But determination breeds resilience, and these daydreams will not become nightmares for one prodigal son. Cody Rhodes, in an epic showdown, emerged as the rightful contender once more. The American Nightmare had earned through grit and glory his second chance at championship gold. Now, the stage is set for an extraordinary collision. Guther, the undefeated ring general, standing as the pinnacle of dominance. Cody Rhodes, the relentless American Nightmare, driven by unyielding ambition. At SummerSlam, a clash of dreams and destiny awaits. What will transpire when the United States Championship hangs in the balance? Will Cody Rhodes rise to the occasion, finally capturing the championship that has eluded him? Or will Gunther's undefeated reign continue, further solidifying his legacy? The answer awaits in the hallowed squared circle. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE United States Championship. This is the third championship match of this evening. And for one sum of a plumber, the stakes couldn't be any higher. Ever since making his WWE return back at WrestleMania, the mindset has been set on one thing for the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes. Championship gold. And tonight, after a summer long wait, Cody Rhodes gets another opportunity to take down one of the most dominating figures in sports entertainment history, the Ring General, Gunta. Just some of the names that Cody Rhodes has surpassed in victory ever since his WWE return. Multiple wins against Austin Theory. He has taken down Johnny Gargano, JD McDonough, Chad Gable, Dolph Ziggler, Robert Roode, Ron Breaker, Mustafa Ali. Just some of the victories for Cody Rhodes. And what about 48 hours ago on SmackDown? Cody alongside his old tag team partner, the current World Heavyweight Champion Drew McIntyre, in a winning effort against Imperium's Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci. Cody Rhodes certainly with momentum behind him tonight, but the last time he met Guther inside the squared circle, it did not end well for Cody. His daydreams certainly became nightmares, but can tonight at SummerSlam turn things around for Cody in his pursuit of championship glory on Friday Night SmackDown. Ladies and gentlemen, the matter is highly. What you're about to witness is dignified deformation executed by unprecedented Precision, a diabolical athlete who was stuck at nothing to uphold the integrity and honor of this great sport. A fitting entrance for the undefeated 14 and 0 Ring General United States Champion Gunther. He won the gold at WrestleMania, defeating Bobby Lashley. He has retained the gold over Wesley, AJ Styles, Rey Mysterio, and Cody Rhodes. And those are just some of the victories over the last several months for the ring general on Friday Night SmackDown. 
the man who once held the NXT United Kingdom Championship for 870 days, walks down the aisle and enters the sacred squared circle in an effort to successfully retain his United States Championship yet again. These two men tore down the house in the Capital One Center back in June at Super SmackDown in Washington, D.C. All roads have led them to tonight. Cody Rhodes earning his way back to number one contendership. But will his hunger to be a champion be enough to keep down the dominating and intimidating Gunther? It is your third championship match of what has been an awesome night here in Levi Stadium. So much more action to come inside of the ring, and it continues right now. Let's send things down to the ring for your official match introductions. Introducing the challenger from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 220 pounds, the American Nightmare, Cody Rose. And his opponent from Vienna, Austria, weighing in at 297 pounds, he is the WWE United States Champion, The United States Championship on the line. The red, white, blue, and gold. Guther handing over the title. And is he handing it over for the very last time in his reign? Cody Rose draped in the colors that he loves oh so much. But will he be wrapped in the gold that is being raised high in the sky? Your third championship match this evening and one of the most high profile of the night. The bell has sounded and we are underway. Cody Gunther, two. Collar and elbow to kick things off. These two men have done the homework on each other. They've seen the playbook. They battled out back in June. Let's see what they bring to the table this time around in Levi Stadium. Gunther immediately looking to take the wind out of Cody's sails. Take out the fighting spirit of the American Nightmare early. Gunther has been so dominant. Just in the last few weeks on SmackDown, we have seen him in very convincing fashion with victories over Dexter Loomis and Johnny Gargano. Gunther has beaten some of the best that SmackDown has had to offer. With a cover on Cody Rhodes early, but I think Gunther knows that it's gonna take more to keep Cody Rhodes down, but just trying to get into the psyche of the American Nightmare. Well, it's been well documented throughout the summer. But many of us believe that Cody Rhodes was the biggest threat to take down Gunther. Gave Gunther the best run for his money yet back in June at Super SmackDown. But at the end of the day, the ring general was just the better man on that night. But can Cody Rhodes change the story here tonight in San Francisco? Just trying to get Gunther off his tail. The American Nightmare going to rev up the engine. Getting the mind of Gunther this time in an effort to become the United States Champion. Oh, wait a minute, Cody from behind, stacking up Gunther. A win is a win, but not gonna get that victory just yet. Remember how Cody became the United States Champion's number one contender, outlasting four other competitors and eliminating every single one of them in a five-man elimination contest. Dolph Ziggler, Mustafa Ali, Robert Roode, Braun Breaker, all getting their shoulders pinned to the mat by the American Nightmare. Cody's certainly a deserving challenger for Gunther here tonight. Off the buckles with that drop kick, sending the ring general out to the apron. See what Cody's got in mind, and there goes the champion, and down is Gunther. Cody Rhodes is feeling it here at Levi Stadium, and a two-base suicida to the outside. The last time Cody Rhodes was in Levi Stadium, he was draped in stars, participating in a ladder match all those years ago. Tonight, Cody comes back, a completely different man, looking over drink draped in the red, white, blue, and gold. Not enough to keep Guther down just yet. But Cody gonna continue to press forward. Nice kick to the side of the dome by the American Nightmare. Now Cody Rhodes looking to work over the ring general, but Guther, oh man. Cody's got to stay clear of some of those chops. The hardest hitter in World Wrestling Entertainment is the man in the maroon, and he's now got that cross face in on Cody. 
trying to pass out the challenger, but Cody able to roll out of it. Luckily for him, a nice shot to take the champion off his feet. Luther, there's one thing we know about him that it's one thing to keep him off, or should say take him off its feet. It's a whole other thing to try to keep him there. And obviously, nobody has been able to keep Guther down for the count of three. This is what Guther's going to try to do. Take the wind out of the sails of Cody Rhodes. Tame the excitement from the crowd. Absolutely just see the hopes and the dreams of Cody shatter into a million pieces before his very hands tonight. That is what the ring general hopes to do. He and, and Levi Stadium. Oh no. Look at this. The hammers to the chest or to the heart and the dreams of Cody Rhodes. Just hear the hush come over Levi Stadium when Cody takes a fall like that. San Francisco firmly behind the American Nightmare. But everybody realizes what Cody's in the ring with tonight. My goodness! Death Valley driver on the outside. Gunther did not come to play game here tonight. Gunther did not mince words. 14-0 for a reason. Showcasing why here at SummerSlam. Back inside the squared circle. Guther not able to capitalize. Cody go for the disaster kick, but Guther out of position, and Guther takes down Cody. And the ring general on a snap of the fingers, looking to diminish Cody Rhodes off the German. Oh no, oh no, Guther's got the chokehold in. You see how fast he was able to wrap the arms and legs around the American Nightmare. Cody saved by the ropes, but the interesting story there is that is the submission hold that Guther used to conquer Cody Rhodes back in June. Cody knows it very well. He has faded to it in the past, not looking to repeat history here tonight. Guther's got other plans. Cody might have got saved by the ropes, but he might have just got pushed into more punishment. Oh, Cody able to avoid Guther's assault right there. Brawl continues at ringside. Cody Rhodes, and honestly, this may be the best case scenario for him. Uses surroundings to his advantage. Luther's controlled the last few minutes. But now Cody looking to throw caution in the wind, all in the means of success here tonight. Up on the top. What a drop kick to the outside. Down goes the ring general. And now Cody with Guther in his grasp. Oh man. The ring general creating that separation easily. And sending Cody right to the announce table. And you see how fast Guther takes back the momentum. Not allowing Cody Rhodes to get the ball rolling in this match. Back and forth we begin to go. As things broke down at ringside. And now back inside the squared circle and Cody Rhodes meets Gunther with a big time Larry making a dose. The champion taken off his feet, but for how long can Cody keep him there? Everything Cody throws at Gunther, Gunther's there to survive and pushes Cody off as he was looking for the Bulldog. And a big time drop kick by the United States champion. Vintage out of the arsenal of the ring general, but not enough to keep Cody down. Great contest thus far between Cody and Gunther. Champion and challenger leaving everything in the kitchen sink inside the squared circle thus far here tonight. As Gunther looks to continue to pick apart his number one contender. Gunther knows the whispers that have made their way around the locker room. The word amongst the WWE Universe that Cody was his biggest challenge that almost had him beat back in June. Gunther looks for a convincing victory tonight, but Cody Rhodes is in search of the United States Championship. Big time DDT, an overhand shot. Cody springboard, disaster kick. Cody into the cover to become United States Champion. No. Almost had him there, taking Guther off his feet with the disaster, but not enough to win the title. 
Gunther down. Maybe the punishment starting to creep up on the ring general. Does Cody have his number? Gunther swinging for the fences. It's one thing to even get the upper hand against Gunther, but to keep it is a whole different story. Gunther will snap back into it and take the momentum back with emphatic force in a matter of seconds in a matchup. Gunther down on the outside again. And Cody Rhodes is feeling it. Cody, oh man, a little bit of an unbound springboard and a dive to the outside. Any means necessary is the mindset of the American Nightmare. Sending Gunther back inside the squared circle. But what does Cody Rhodes have in mind for the champion? Cody knows Gunther still got fuel left in the tank. Going for the moonsault, but Gunther avoids it. And a German sends Cody for a ride. Into the cover, and that may be all she wrote. But Cody kicks out. Cody risked it there. They don't call it high risk for any reason. The moonsault was not to be. And now Gunther, oh, wait a minute. The ring general's going to the top. Cody better look out from the heavens because the United States champion's wheels are turning. And what a massive drop kick by the ring general. Gunther picking up steam, dropping all of his weight on the rib cage. Gunther came to play tonight. And Cody Rhodes is feeling the brunt of it. This is the relentlessness. The fierceness, if you will, of Gunther. And the reason he is 14-0. Cody Rhodes has got to survive. Takes Gunther off his feet. Snapman. The challenger. With an unyielding spirit to become the United States Champion. Trying to change the tides. Sending Guther into the corner with the ring general. Avoids it and a boot scrape now. Cody with the counter. Has read Guther's playbook time and time again. Did his homework and did it well. Lefts and rights and a headbutt. The son of the plumber is fired up under the bright lights of the Bay Area. What a matchup between these two SmackDown All-Stars on hand. And there's the knee by Guther that I believe he was looking for a few moments ago. Oh no. Last Symphony into the cover to retain the title. Cody survives. Cody kicks out. The matchup lives on. Oh no, oh no. Guther like a shark in infested waters. But that choke hold locked in. Cody tapped out before he gave up to this maneuver to avoid further injury. Will he give up tonight? Cody's trying to survive. How much life does Guther still have left? Cody, oh my goodness, breaking the hold. The elbows creates the distance. The American Nightmare still in this fight. Oh my. Can he hit it? Verna Breaker. Get the cover, Cody, with the title to become United States Champion. No! You have got to be kidding me. A match of the year candidate on deck here at SummerSlam. This is what the United States Championship is all about. Live for the moment, never look back. Cody Frankensteiner. Guther's hurt. The ring general is in trouble, and possibly a trouble that he has never been in before. Guther on the top rope again. The American Nightmare is looking to make it a dose. A second, Frankensteiner, if it works, repeat it. Go to the well, hope for success. San Francisco, California coming unglued. Cody sending Guther up and over on the apron. The ring general may be in trouble. Spoke too soon and there's a counter. Shoulder blocked to the rib cage. Cody Rhodes, however, sends Guther into the corner again and drops him with the forearm there, it looked like. Cody heading to the top. What has he got in mind? Big time elbow to the heart of the champion. Cody is fired up. Now onto the middle buckle. Drops another elbow. Looked like he might have caught the throat of Gunther. 
and Cody's not done. Heading to the top again. The American Nightmare. Live for the moment. Moonsault. That's got to do it. We're going to have a new champion. No. Gunther kicks out again. What is it going to take? Does Cody Rhodes have it in him? Is Cody Rhodes going to be the one? Or is he going to be just another victim in the legacy of the ring general? Cody throwing some shots. Gunther into the ropes. Beautiful takedown by the American Nightmare. Gunther may be hurt. But that doesn't mean he still doesn't have fight left in him. And there it is. There's a knee. Gunther grabbing a hold. Oh, no. Oh, no. Power bomb. Stacking him up with it. Gunther has defeated so many opponents with that maneuver. But only a one count. Are you kidding me right now? Cody Rhodes is up. Cody Rhodes is alive. How is Cody surviving? Gunther, submission hold. Cross face locked in. A desperate champion. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Will Cody fade? My goodness, Cody may see his hopes and dreams flash before his eyes. But he rolls out with it. Gunther now may be in trouble. Collar and elbow to stop Cody dead in his tracks with the American Nightmare. Great in some distance. Somehow survived that powerbomb moments ago. Gunther's got to be racking his brain. I don't know if anybody's ever survived of that deadly powerbomb. But Cody's still got life left in him. Blood in the heart. And the American Nightmare's coming unglued. Usually it's Gunther. Hunting in infested waters. Tonight, Gunther is the fish bleeding from the wounds. And Cody is the shark. Oh, no. The crossroads doesn't do it. Gunther kicked out of the crossroads. But Cody, eyes locked sharp on a weakened champion. A double crossroads cover. Win the damn thing! Come on, Cody! Cody Rhodes is the new United States Champion! The prodigal son with a destiny to become great, to become a legend and live forever answers the call under the bright lights of SummerSlam. Here is your winner. From undesirable to undeniable to United States champion. The undefeated is not unbeatable. Gunther falls and the American Nightmare is leaving with the red, white, blue, and gold. The dream has got to be looking down a proud father and the son of a plumber with all the happiness and success in the world, leaves Levi Stadium holding championship gold. The next time we come your way for not one, but two live premiere events is 27 nights from tonight, as we kick off a huge September doubleheader weekend. First, on Saturday, September 16th, we bring to you a Friday Night Smackdown exclusive event, No Mercy, live from the CFG Bank Arena in Baltimore, Maryland. And then just 24 hours later, the Monday Night Raw crew headlines the exclusive Unforgiven event, taking place on September 17th from the Allstate Arena in Chicago, Illinois. It's a September doubleheader, a live premiere weekend featuring the Cruiserweight Classic, SmackDown's No Mercy in Baltimore, and Raw's Unforgiven in Chicago. Well, the Bay Area here in San Francisco, California has been an incredible host. What a night 
here at SummerSlam thus far. And what a week it has been for Monday Night Raw in Las Vegas, SmackDown in Sacramento, the Cruiserweight Classic kicking off yesterday in Manhattan and tonight in Levi Stadium. An awesome week to be a fan here of Universe Mode. But tonight, SummerSlam continues with an open challenge by the A-list superstar from Monday Night Raw, The Miz. Miz has been in a busy, bit of a losing streak for not just a few weeks, a few months on the red brand. And finally, The Miz had enough. He said, I'm gonna turn things around. I'm gonna prove to the world why I am the A-list superstar. Open challenge at SummerSlam, and I want the best to answer the call. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Hollywood, California, weighing in at 221 pounds. The Miz! Yeah, you gotta give credit to The Miz. He's done basically everything there is to do in the WWE from main event WrestleMania to hold the WWE Championship, Intercontinental title, United States title, tag team title, money in the bank, name it, The Miz has most likely done it. But can he turn his luck around here tonight in Levi Stadium? The question is, who will stand across from The Miz? and compete in this matchup. We're gonna find out right here, right now, as SummerSlam rolls on. of the past have come to haunt the Miz. Be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. The Miz wanted the best, but he may have gotten the scariest. Weeks upon weeks, this man has left clues. He has left his mark in the shadows, but stepping out of the shadows and re-emerging at the biggest party of the summer. The Eater of Worlds. Bray Wyatt! What a moment in Levi Stadium! The Miz has got to be shaking in his oh-so-tied-tightly boots. The last time this man was in this very building was in a confrontation against the dead man, the Undertaker himself. If Bray Wyatt can stand across one of the best to ever do it in an atmosphere like this all those years ago, imagine what The Miz is about to step in the ring with tonight. This is a monster who has seen the worst. A man behind the mask that has been to hell and back. Wars amongst the best, wars amongst himself. But tonight, the White Rabbit has walked down the aisle and Bray Wyatt is at SummerSlam. Wow, just 
Wow. The Miz cannot have been expecting this. The A-list superstar, Bray Wyatt, underway here at SummerSlam. The Miz wanted to turn around his, his bad luck tonight, his losing streak. But I don't know if Bray Wyatt is the guy that The Miz is going to have that fortunate fate around. Bray Wyatt is back. He's back for a reason. We will find out in due time. But there's no way that the Eater of Worlds is going to let the A-list superstar spoil his grand re-emergence. Levi Stadium, San Francisco, California, is it all of the man that stands in the black. And The Miz may be second guessing, issuing an open challenge to anyone who is anybody. As Bray Wyatt sends him for a ride. Right into an early cover, and The Miz kicks out. But he may just be delaying the inevitable. Ray Wyatt, a former WWE Champion, a former Tag Team Champion. He has fought and won against some of the best. And even in defeat, Ray Wyatt has put the lights of The Undertaker, John Cena, to name a few, to their absolute limits. We have seen Bray Wyatt in one of the most violent wars, in some of the most scary battles and some of the most intimidating moments in WWE. And he's back tonight at SummerSlam to issue a message to the Monday Night Raw locker room. Oh, wait a minute, Sister Abigail! Cover! Thanks for coming, Miz! Bray Wyatt is back, and the Eater of Worlds just sent a loud and clear message that he's coming for everybody. Wyatt. What a Summer Slam moment. Sunday night, August the 20th, Levi Stadium, San Francisco, California, marks the return of the Eater of Worlds, the sinister, destructive Bray Wyatt. That is a man who can strike fear into the hearts of many. And the Monday Night Raw locker room better look out because Bray Wyatt is back and Bray is coming to the red brand and God only knows what that man has in store for everybody who will stand across the squared circle from the Eater of Worlds. Coming up next here at SummerSlam, it is being called the money fight, and for good reason. Two of the most dominant women in WWE history set to collide as the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, meets the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, for the WWE Women's Championship. And right now, we're going to take a look at the tail of the tape between these two competitors. Asuka, standing 5'3", 137 pounds, very similar to the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. Asuka, four-time women's champion here in the WWE, the longest reigning NXT women's champion. And a notable note here, 12 wins in her last 13 matches is the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka. And over the last year, Asuka has spent 284 days as a champion since she initially won the women's championship last, last year at SummerSlam. As for Shayna Baszler, of course, your current WWE Women's Champion, a two-time overall NXT Women's Champion, is on a 12-match winning streak. Going tit for tat with Asuka right there when it comes to the victories. And over the last 63 days, the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, has been atop the division as the Women's Champion. But it all comes to a head up next. Asuka Baszler, Women's Title, is on the line. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Women's Championship. Last year at SummerSlam, the Empress of Tomorrow cashed in Money in the Bank to become the Women's Champion. 
as you just saw in the tail of the tape. 284 days over the last year Asuka has spent as the women's champion. Unfortunately for her, back on May the 14th at Vengeance, she lost the gold to Liv Morgan. And as Asuka disappeared for quite some time, it was Shayna Baszler who stepped up, dethroned Liv Morgan, back at King of the Ring in June to become the women's champion. All the while, Asuka was planning her comeback in the shadows. And it was last month at Money in the Bank, the Empress of Tomorrow resurfaced and really took the spotlight away from the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. Baszler did not take kindly. A brawl ensued in the middle of Nationwide Arena, and really the seeds began to be planted for this money fight on that night. Asuka became the number one contender, defeating Becky Lynch and Liv Morgan in a triple threat match a number of weeks ago on Raw. All the while, Shayna Baszler has continued her dominance over the women's division. 12 wins in the last 13 matches for the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka. About one loss, as we mentioned, coming to Liv Morgan back in May. But Asuka's looking to turn everything around and get back to where she once was at the top of the division as most intimidating and dominant women's champion of all time. But this woman has got a different plan. The Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. Shayna going eye for an eye with Asuka on a 12 match winning streak, all coming since the month of March. Zoe Stark, Nikita Lyons, Indy Hartwell, Candice LeRae, Liv Morgan, Alexa Bliss. Just some of the names that Shayna Baszler has turned away in recent months, whether it be on SmackDown or Raw. Ever since winning that women's championship at King of the Ring, Shayna Baszler went from intimidating to downright nobody wants to step in the ring with the champion, a feared superstar in the locker room. But if there's somebody who will not back down from any challenge, regardless of the opposer, it is Asuka. The two, without a doubt, most dominating women in WWE history. The reason this is being called the money fight is because so much rise on the line. Two of the biggest names to ever grace, the squared circle, meet one-on-one -on -one for the richest prize, the WWE Women's Championship here at SummerSlam. Introducing the challenger from Osaka, Japan. Of course, that Women's Championship Universal between both brands bringing us this interpromotional matchup here tonight. Shayna Baszler representing SmackDown, Asuka representing Raw, and your fourth of six championships to be decided here at Levi Stadium. The gold is on the line. Will the title go back to the Empress of Tomorrow, where it's resided for the better part of a year, or is Shayna Baszler's dominance going to continue? We will find out in due time as the bell has sounded, and we are underway. And Asuka hot out of the gate, trapping the arms with the belly to belly, suplex on Shayna Baszler. Big time matchup here tonight. As Shayna Baszler muscles up Asuka, and down she goes. Quick pinfall out of the Queen of Spades. Gets the two count early. That speaks volumes to the strength and the power of Shayna Baszler. These two women have absolutely had a stranglehold on the women's division for not just the last year, but if we're just talking about the last 12 months in chains, it's either Oscar or Shayna Baszler who's either always been in the conversation. And then you look at the years prior, their runs in NXT, Shayna and Asuka have been on top of the women's division for the better part of year after year here in World Wrestling Entertainment. It was bound to come to this eventually. And all it took was Oscar resurfacing. It could have been anybody holding that championship. Liv Morgan, Shayna Baszler, but they just happened to be around the waist of the Queen of Spades. Oscar wants back the gold, and Baszler's not looking to step out of the limelight for anybody right now. 
And Asuka comes from the top with a crossbody. Asuka's been waiting for this moment since she lost the title on May 14th. And as we just mentioned, whether it was still Liv Morgan holding the title, whether it was Shayna Baszler holding the title, Asuka was going to rear her head eventually, and when she did, she was coming back for the championship that she lost back in Vancouver at Vengeance. This matchup getting taken to the outside. Asuka and Shayna so similar. As you saw earlier tonight in the opening video package, this is going to be a matchup of strikes, combinations, submission holds. A lot of similarities between these two women who are competing for this championship here at Levi Stadium as Asuka, oh, wait a minute, on the outside with a German suplex. Shayna Baszler's bell is going to be rung off that. On her feet. The lights are on, but I don't know if anybody's home as Asuka makes her way back inside of the ring, at least just to break the count. It gave Shayna time to recuperate, and Asuka gets sent right to the announce table. It was a brutal German on the outside of the ring. The Empress of Tomorrow will do any means necessary to become champion yet again. Will it be a back-to-back -back win here at SummerSlam for Asuka? And Baszler goes back to the well. And that powerbomb variation got another two count. Asuka able to survive. Again, as we mentioned, Asuka becoming number one contender, winning a big-time main event, triple threat affair on Raw. It's Liv Morgan and the man Becky Lynch. Meanwhile, Shayna Baszler just cut Asuka in half of the spear, but it's only a one. These two women throwing live rounds, not holding anything back in the early going of this matchup. Came to play tonight and came to leave Levi Stadium, the WWE Women's Champion. Asuka scaled the ropes with a drop kick and now utilizing those kicks and takes Baszler down. Last time we saw Asuka in front of a stadium like this was back at WrestleMania when she retained the women's title over the man Becky Lynch. Still a lot of unfinished business, dare I say, between Asuka and Becky that I'm sure will be settled in due time. But right now, Asuka looking to have the same success that she has had for the better part of 12 months. Hip attack on Baszler! Not going for the cover yet. Asuka wants to go for the kill, possibly the Asuka lock. Oh, but Baszler, at least you want to rake the eyes and a step up Super Women punch. Asuka and Baszler not waiting for the late rounds of this matchup. Coming out swinging since the opening bell. No looking back. One goal in mind. Leave it as champion. Hip attack not enough to keep Baszler down. And Shayna Baszler changing the trajectory. With double suplex variations to Asuka. Another reversal by the Empress. Back and forth, a pendulum of momentum swings in this money fight as Asuka snapped German into the cover. And Baszler gets the shoulder up at two. Pedal to the metal between the champion and the challenger. There's another reversal by Baszler. She sends Asuka to the corner. Now Shane and Baszler. Might be a good idea for one of these women to try to slow the momentum down. And I got a feeling it's going to be the Queen of Spades here. Who's just looking to pick apart the challenger in the corner of the squared circle. Baszler with an A. At some point, the high momentum, blood pressure rising offense, if you will, is going to start to take a toll. You can only go so many miles a minute. Eventually, you're going to slow down. And I think is what we're seeing right now is the toll of these big time maneuvers back and forth start to take their toll on Asuka and Baszler. See both of them going for strikes right there. Neither lands, but Asuka able to take down the champion at least for a moment. The Empress goes behind a nice neck breaker. Asuka now trying to get back into this matchup. Another name. Asuka's name has been synonymous with that women's championship over the last year and change alone. As we mentioned last year at SummerSlam, Asuka left the biggest party of the summer holding the title. Will it be the same tonight? But you see the exhaustion starting to set in for the Empress as she delivers the double knees, but not able to capitalize right away. And two wasted bodies on the outside of the squared circle. Now back inside as Asuka comes from the top and drops the splash to the rip cage. Asuka looking to become women's champion yet again tonight. 
unloading on the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. And if my ears are hearing me correct, it sounds like San Francisco is behind the Empress of Tomorrow tonight, looking to see Asuka reclaim her throne at the top of the women's division. She has beaten the hell out of Shayna Baszler. Asuka is coming unglued tonight, coming to SummerSlam with a purpose. Baszler is feeling the brunt of it right now. How many closed fists did she just take? Baszler could be knocked out. Asuka does not give a damn. Asuka wants to win that women's championship, but she should go for the cover. I mean, don't let me take a guess at Asuka's game plan. She could be following everything to perfection right now. Asuka coming off the buckle, but nobody home. The Queen of Spades tackles down the challenger. Asuka might have waited too long to capitalize, and now Shayna Baszler looking to turn the tides. Now Shayna looking to give Asuka some punishment of her own, a receipt for all those closed fist moments ago, and Shayna Baszler's now the one throwing live rounds. Champion goes behind, and another head headlock with a punch. Now it's Asuka who's dazed. Shayna Baszler takes her over the, with the fireman's carry. Challenger into the ropes. Shayna Baszler, big time spine buster. And Shayna Baszler has completely changed the momentum of this match. Now wait a minute. Asuka now with a reversal. Never count out the Empress. Spinning leg lariat into the cover. There's the two, and it's only a two as Shayna Baszler survives. Never count out the Empress, but never count out the Queen of Spades. This match has been back and forth the whole way through. Who is going to leave the women's champion? It very well may, may be a test of endurance. Who wants it more? Who's going to be the last woman standing in this contest? Shayna Baszler again takes Asuka down, and now look at this, trying to take out the legs of the Empress. If you take out the legs, you might take out some of the strikes. And that may be the game plan of the champion here. Baszler sitting Asuka atop the ropes. Now they're not like this for the challenger's chances. Baszler's going for the gut wrench here. Asuka with nowhere to run and gets set for an amusement park ride by hands of the champion who elects for the cover. And that may be all she wrote, but Asuka kicks out again. Levi Stadium showing their appreciation for the efforts from the champion and challenger in the midst of this money fight here at SummerSlam. Shayna Baszler now looking to pick apart Asuka. Take out the arm. Take out all the strikes. Take out the weapons of the Empress. And stop it on the elbow. You know, Asuka faced a lot of challenges in her championship runs over the last year before she lost to Liv Morgan back in May. But I don't think Asuka fought anybody with the style of the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. Baszler is a completely different animal that Asuka has really not dealt with, at least in the last year. Asuka on the outside, Baszler, of course, champion's advantage in this matchup, but I think she knows it's going to take more to keep down the Empress of Tomorrow tonight as Asuka on the outside. And he just shows the wear, wherewithal, the will to succeed of Asuka as she starts to rally San Francisco behind her. Back inside the ring, but Baszler catches her with another spear. Asuka tried to come in. Looks like she was winding up a strike there. Baszler caught her with the spear, but Asuka sidesteps the superwoman punch. Down goes Baszler. And once again, the trajectory of this matchup stays. Momentum back and forth. Hip attack by Asuka. And again, Asuka doesn't elect for the cover just yet. She wants to put the final nail in the coffin in a convincing manner. But Baszler counters. Asuka may have costed herself, not going for the pinfall as Baszler hits the spine buster. What a matchup for the women's championship here tonight at SummerSlam. Shayna Baszler now with the strength from the champion. Spins out the challenger. Face first on the canvas. Cover. No, Asuka kicks out. The matchup rolls on. The wherewithal of the challenger 
still with life left in her. Bayes are starting to come unglued. Just trying to beat down the challenger with the closed fist, with the bare boots. Asuka's feeling the brunt right now. Shayna Baszler's coming unglued, all in the means of retaining the women's championship. Does Baszler have enough in the tank? Asuka, no doubt, her biggest challenge to date since winning the title back in June. And quite frankly, her biggest challenge of those last 12 matches that we have seen her succeed in, but Asuka now has finally got Baszler trapped. Third time's a charm. Asuka locks locked in, and it's locked in dead center of the ring. Shayna Baszler struggling to hold on. We knew it was going to be submission for submission at some point in this match. Who was going to lock in their maneuver first? It's the Asuka lock, and Baszler struggling. At some point, how much energy do you have left to not only survive, but can Asuka hold on for how much longer to keep this move locked in? Oh, and what a mean elbow by Baszler. That's one way to break the hold and a third spear in this matchup. Shayna Baszler, desperate for victory. Unloading on Asuka. Asuka with nowhere to run, getting beat up like a punching bag right now. Baszler whipping Asuka in, sends her over. How Shayna Baszler survived the Asuka lock is inhumane of the champion. Does Shayna Baszler have enough in the tank to keep fighting? We're seeing a sprint right now, but Asuka now with the counter, drop kick, down goes the champion. I'll tell you my prediction, if we see another hip attack or if Asuka gets that submission locked in again, it will spell the end. But wait a minute, Baszler going for the hold of her own now. Karafuda clutch locked in. The Empress of Tomorrow, nowhere to go. Dead center of the canvas. Asuka's trying to survive. She's fighting the will to succeed. Can she get out of this? She cannot. Shayna Baszler wins the money fight. It was Asuka Lock versus Kara Fuda Clutch. And in the end, Baszler. And still, WWE Women's Champion, the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. Baszler is the one to succeed. What a matchup. And what a night it's been here at SummerSlam. But ladies and gentlemen, coming up next is the Friday Night SmackDown main event for the World Heavyweight title. Austin Theory, Drew McIntyre, who wants it more? The big gold belt is on the line. In the whirlwind world of WWE, few have risen as swiftly and grand as Austin Theory. The rising young talent who outlasted every challenge from Mustafa Ali to Dolph Ziggler, AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura to claim the illustrious title of the King of the Ring winner. With each victory, Austin Theory not only earned the King's crown, but also an undeniable opportunity to etch his name in history. But the year of 2023 has undoubtedly belonged to another warrior, the Scottish powerhouse, Drew McIntyre. From the grandest stages to the fiercest battles, Drew has stood tall against all odds. SmackDown has been painted in the colors of the Scottish flag with McIntyre at its helm. A champion who thrives on a challenge, relentlessly showcasing his warrior spirit. As for the young star from A-Town, amid the fierce momentum, doubts and questions have surfaced. After a recent encounter with the rated R superstar Edge, Theory finds himself facing uncertainty. In a career marked by ambition, Theory's focus must remain unwavering. The World Heavyweight title is at stake, a chance to carve his name alongside the greatest. Meanwhile, the Scottish warrior Drew McIntyre stands under tears. A champion forged in battles, he relishes the thought of another conquest, another legacy defining war. Two paths, two destinies collide at SummerSlam. Austin Theory, a young star with immense potential, yearning to accede to even greater heights. Drew McIntyre, a relentless champion, eager to add yet another triumphant chapter to his storied legacy. The stage is set, the ring awaits, the coveted World Heavyweight Championship hangs in the balance. 
But who will leave SummerSlam as the one holding the championship gold high? Only one superstar can call themselves the face of Friday nights. This is simply a challenge of who wants it more. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the World Heavyweight Championship. It is Friday Night SmackDown's main event on the biggest stage of the summer. And it is time to party for the World Heavyweight Championship. The young star from A-Town, the 2023 King of the Ring winner, Austin Theory. You may not like his attitude, his ego, or his loud mouth, but you cannot knock the effort and certainly can't deny the results. Back in June, Austin Theory defeated Mustafa Ali, Dolph Ziggler, AJ Styles, and Shinsuke Nakamura to win the crown of the king and earn this main event match here tonight. On the other side of the ring is a man who has took on any and all challengers in Drew McIntyre. McIntyre has turned away some of the best this business has ever had to offer. But Austin Theory, a different challenge for Drew McIntyre. One of the fastest rising stars in all of WWE history may be the recipe that spells the end of McIntyre's legendary run as World Heavyweight Champion. But here comes the Scottish Warrior. Back at WrestleMania, Drew McIntyre won the World Heavyweight Championship. And week after week, month after month, McIntyre has defended it with pride, glory, and respect. Drew McIntyre has faced the best, has beaten the best. From John Cena to Seth Rollins to Braun Breaker to Edge and Randy Orton. McIntyre has put that world title on the line to any he deems necessary, and he has turned away the challengers. Tonight, McIntyre looks across the ring from a young, hungry Austin Theory who's looking to spoil his run at the top. That fire breathing son of a bitch has been on the roll of a lifetime in 2023. But will McIntyre's luck run out tonight? On this stage, Levi Stadium, San Francisco, California, McIntyre enters these hallowed halls, waving the flag of Friday Night SmackDown, but Austin Theory is hungry for McIntyre's spot and is willing to do anything to dethrone the Scottish Warrior. This is why you get into this business. This is why you work so hard for moments like tonight, for matches like these. It is the Friday Night SmackDown main event on one of the biggest shows in the WWE calendar for the World Heavyweight Championship. Austin Theory, Drew McIntyre. Let's get it going here at Levi Stadium. Introducing the challenger from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 220 pounds, Austin Theory. And his opponent from Ayer, Scotland, weighing in at 254 pounds, he is the World Heavyweight Champion, the Scottish Warrior. The champion looks laser focused, but so does the challenger, who recognizes this is the biggest match of his career. It was a calendar year ago where Austin Theory was in the midst of a one month run as the WWE Champion. That was spoiled by the rated R superstar Edge, the same man who defeated Austin Theory two weeks ago on SmackDown. How will that play into Austin Theory's momentum and his mindset as this SmackDown main event
kicks off here at SummerSlam. A whole lot of writing on this matchup between Theory and McIntyre, and McIntyre's looking to show this young man that even though you're great, you aren't ready for this spotlight. McIntyre, world heavyweight champion, not looking to let up on his grasp of that title anytime soon. Got Austin Theory cornered early, and McIntyre looking to make waves in the early moments of this match. Drew is coming unglued. It did not take long for McIntyre to get fired up. He feels the magic of the moment. He feels the challenger on his neck tonight. And Drew McIntyre looking to teach him some respect. Michinuku driver, early cover. Only a one count there for the World Heavyweight Champion looking to retain his title. Austin Theory getting set over the top and Drew McIntyre Oh, wait a minute, taking a page out of his friend Sheamus' book, 10 beats to the heart, to the wills, and to the dreams of Austin Theory. And down goes the King of the Ring winner. McIntyre is fired up. Wait a minute, wait a minute, McIntyre taking things to the air in the early going. The World Heavyweight Champion has got his foot on the gas pedal and is not looking to let up for young, hungry Austin Theory. Into another cover, McIntyre looking to make quick work of his challenger tonight, but got to give credit where it's due. Austin Theory did not come without a game plan. Austin Theory is not in this position for no reason. He has earned his right whether you like him or not. Beat four of the best in the business, from Mustafa Ali to Dolph Ziggler to AJ Styles to roll Shinsuke Nakamura in the finals all those months ago to win King of the Ring. Austin Theory defeated Cody Rhodes back in WrestleMania. Austin Theory, as we mentioned this time last year, was in the midst of a one-month run as WWE Champion by hook or by crook, a fluke or not, he held that gold, and he's looking to win gold 12 months later, here at SummerSlam. This leg lock locked in on McIntyre, but I think Theory knows it's not gonna make Drew get up so early. Austin Theory could be looking away, looking to take away, I should say, the Claymore kick of McIntyre. Smart game plan, if that is the case, for the King of the Ring winner. Take out the leg, you might take out McIntyre's best weapon. Austin Theory going for an early cover. We'll be looking to give Drew McIntyre some of the same mind games back. McIntyre is looking for the early victory. I think he knew he wasn't going to defeat Austin Theory. He's just trying to play into the psyche of the young man. McIntyre on the outside. Wait a minute, here comes Theory with a tope suicide through the ropes. A rare high risk maneuver out of Austin Theory, but desperate times call for desperate measures. And Austin Theory is looking to leave with the championship tonight. Theory leaving it all out there in the early moments. Diving through the ropes, taking out the champion, and now sending McIntyre into the barricade. Austin Theory recognizes who he is dancing with tonight. One of the toughest to ever step foot inside the squared circle in Drew McIntyre. Austin Theory has watched from a distance. McIntyre beat some of the best to ever do it over the last couple of months from John Cena to Edge to Randy Orton just to name a few and Austin Theory knows he's got to bring his A game tonight if he wants to become the world heavyweight champion sending McIntyre all around ringside right now and smart by Austin Theory to go break the count the Theory Sending McIntyre back inside the ring and taking a moment to soak it all in here in Levi Stadium. Better stay on the World Heavyweight Champion though. It's one thing to get him down, it's a whole other thing to keep him out. McIntyre has not lost a matchup since December against John Cena on SmackDown, but Austin Theory off the blockbuster may be handing McIntyre a brand new loss. And McIntyre gets the shoulder up, but a great effort by Austin Theory. Theory a legitimate threat to the gold tonight, and McIntyre recognizes that. Nice reversal there by the champion, who now turns Theory around and drops him with the neckbreaker. Slow down the momentum at least for a moment. Send him into the corner. Big time Larry, squashing Theory. 
from pillar to post. And now McIntyre looking to stomp out the heart of the King of the Ring winner. It's a great comeback there by McIntyre to get the momentum back on his side. And I'll send Theory into the corner again. Let's see what Drew McIntyre's got in store for Austin Theory. Oh, big time kick! Austin Theory thought he was going to outsmart the champion there, but McIntyre won step ahead of the challenger. Only a one count, but enough to knock the wind out of Theory and send him to the outskirts, at least for a moment. Austin Theory dazed, got his bell rung. McIntyre off the apron, dropping the axe hammer. Things once again make their way to ringside here in Levi Stadium. Drew McIntyre, look at this. Down goes the challenger again. Austin Theory a few moments ago hit that big time German at ringside to McIntyre. McIntyre with a little receipt to Austin Theory off that power slam. Back inside the squared circle where McIntyre delivers the Michinuku driver for the second time in this main event contest. But not done. McIntyre recognizes the challenger's efforts. Knows it's going to take more to keep down all day Austin Theory. Now McIntyre scaling the ropes. And a big time leg drop. The tree trunks to the throat of Austin Theory. Into the cover to retain the title. Almost had him there, but Austin Theory kicks out. McIntyre cannot allow the young effort from Austin Theory to interfere with his game plan. Looked like McIntyre was going for Glasgow Kiss, but Theory was able to reverse it just in the nick of time, and there's a pump kick by Theory. That is how quick the momentum can shift, especially in a big time world title match. Now Austin Theory looking to lay on the pressure, looking to defeat the world champion and leave with the big gold belt. That was a very timely reversal by Theory moments ago. You saw McIntyre wind it up for that Glasgow kiss, enough to knock anybody out. But Austin Theory did his homework, had it scouted, able to counter, and now he's got McIntyre fighting an uphill battle. There's Drew with a reversal. And Theory takes him out. Austin Theory cannot allow McIntyre to get going once again. I think it may be a good idea for Theory to stay on those legs as McIntyre. Eliminate some of the kicks, especially the Glasgow kiss. Or shoot the Claymore kick of Drew McIntyre. Austin Theory just trying to pick apart the world champion. But McIntyre still breathing, still with blood pumping through the veins. And the will to succeed goes for the big boot. Nobody home. McIntyre with another chop, and there it is. If it doesn't work once, go for a second. That time McIntyre gets his wish. And Theory once again. It's almost been the saving grace of Theory to head to the outside and take a breather from the World Heavyweight Champion's offense. McIntyre on the ropes, goes for a dive, but Austin Theory out of the way, a crash and burn by McIntyre. McIntyre sent into the ring. He might have cost himself there. Austin Theory on the champion's tail. Cutting him in half. McIntyre is in trouble right now. Alt oh, spoke too soon. Grabs a hold of the challenger. Squashes him in the corner. And a boot scrape. Never count out the Scottish Warrior. This SmackDown main event starting to kick into a new gear. World titles on the line. Who wants it more? Spinebuster by McIntyre. Elects to go for the cover. And Austin Theory kicks out. Well, a great effort by Austin Theory thus far, but does he have enough to outlast the onslaught of the champion who powers bombs Austin Theory? What strength out of McIntyre, especially as we get into deep waters in this match. That is a testament to the toughness of Drew McIntyre to muscle up Austin Theory and hit that power bomb, and now McIntyre, Glasgow kiss. But it's not enough to keep Austin Theory down and kick out for the challenger, and McIntyre can't believe it. He fought off the power bomb, plus the Glasgow kiss. He might have had him, but Austin Theory now with the reversal, and Theory 
grabs a hold of the champion. There's the strength out of the challenger, and that might have been a knockout blow. But Theory persistent, unloading on the champion. McIntyre's down, a wounded beast, and Austin Theory looking to prey upon the champion. You gotta give credit to Austin Theory. He has given McIntyre a run for his money tonight. Oh man, McIntyre's in trouble. Theory's picking him apart right now. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness! A, tail, down! We're gonna have a new World Heavyweight Champion! No! At the last second, McIntyre kicks out! Austin Theory crashes and burns. McIntyre survived. Eight town down. Oh, man. McIntyre went Claymore. Theory went pump kick. Both men crashed and burned. But it's Austin Theory who gets the upper hand. The matchup rolls on. Theory has got McIntyre wounded. It's unloading on the world heavyweight champion. He didn't put McIntyre away with the eight town down. But he may have Drew McIntyre in an opportune state. But there's Drew throwing some haymakers, throwing left, throwing right. The Scottish Warriors coming alive. World titles on the line. There's a miss by McIntyre. A reversal by the champion. McIntyre, neck breaker on theory. The Scottish Warrior is coming alive. The heart is still pumping, and the will to succeed is higher than ever. Theory up against the turnbuckles and not where he wants to be with this fire breathing dragon looking to come alive. Look at the muscle out of the champion here. A super plex to the challenger. Theory's down. The matchup rolls on. San Francisco is in all. McIntyre looking to put the final nail in Theory. And now Drew into the cover to retain the title. But Austin Theory grabs the ropes. Theory grabs the ropes. The wherewithal, the champion. This is what the World Championship means to each and every one of the competitors in the SmackDown locker room. And the champion and challenger know what's at stake. They know what this moment means. Who wants it more? Do you want to be the man? Do you want to be the face of SmackDown as the World Heavyweight Champion? McIntyre to the outside. Austin Theory goes for the suicide dive and he hits it again. Austin Theory is still alive. And I got a feeling we are inching closer and closer to a new world heavyweight champion. That is how much Austin Theory is given this fight tonight. The champion's down, the champion's wounded, but the champion's not out. Oh, into the announce table goes Austin Theory. Counts at a, a five right now. McIntyre has got a dazed Austin Theory on the outside, and McIntyre comes off the apron full head of steam. He looked for it earlier to no avail. This time he takes out Theory. All the weight of McIntyre coming crashing down on the champion. Back inside the squared circle. McIntyre's loaded up for a Claymore! The cover on Theory! And Drew McIntyre has staked his claim at the top of Friday Night SmackDown yet again! Waving the flag stronger than ever! That fire-breathing son of a bitch just wants it more! McIntyre is still the World Heavyweight Champion! Here is your winner, and still, World Heavyweight Champion, the Scottish Warrior, Drew McIntyre. That is what Friday Night SmackDown is all about. That is what the World Heavyweight Championship is all about. McIntyre has been on the run of a lifetime. 2023 has been the year of the Warrior. And that Scottish psychopath is still on top of the mountain. Drew McIntyre leaving Levi Stadium. Still your 
World Heavyweight Champion! Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a phenomenal night. But coming up next, it is your main event. Four Monday Night Raw All-Stars set to collide. A summer-long battle concludes in a fatal four-way match for the WWE Championship. The stage is set. The spotlight shines brighter as the WWE Universe prepares for a battle of monumental proportions. Four All-Stars of Monday Night Converge, concluding a summer-long battle to determine supremacy on Raw. The almighty Bobby Lashley, driven by a hunger to reclaim the gold he once held, a roller coaster journey culminates in this chance at redemption. With momentum on his side, Lashley stands tall, days removed from a convincing triumph over John Cena. Will that momentum ride at an all-time high and leave Lashley holding the gold? And then, there's John Cena himself, a name synonymous with greatness, a man on a relentless quest for his 17th World Championship. Although opportunities have slipped out of the hands of Cena, he finds his name back in the main event, hoping that tonight is the night where 20 plus years in this industry rewards him with a groundbreaking achievement. The dark and ominous, carrying cross, a force to be reckoned with, has left a trail of destruction on his path to this moment. No one has been safe from his wrath, not even the champion himself, who fell crashing to the floor of Sin City just days ago by none other than the hands of the Sinister Destroyer. And then there's the WWE Champion, Matt Riddle, a fighter who has defined the odds time and time again, battling past obstacles from former allies to legends. He stands as a testament to resilience and determination. Each of these warriors has battled against all odds, their journeys converging on one of the biggest stages of the year. SummerSlam beacons as the ultimate proving ground, the stage for a war of all wars, a battlefield where ambition, pride, and glory collide. Lashley, Cross, Cena, Riddle, their destinies intertwine. The question echoes in the air, a question that will be answered under the brightest lights of SummerSlam. In this epic encounter, in this epic main event, who will be the only man left standing? Who among these titans will seize the ultimate prize and etch their name as the one true WWE Champion? It is main event time at the biggest party of the summer. Levi Stadium, San Francisco, California, SummerSlam! The following contest is a fatal four-way match and is for the WWE Championship! Introducing the challenger from West Newberry, Massachusetts, weighing in at 251 pounds. The franchise John Cena has been on the hunt for number 17 all year long. Unfortunately for Cena, opportunities have slipped through the hands of John Cena's pursuit of becoming 17-time world champion. But tonight, finally, the franchise finds himself back in the main event back in the limelight of SummerSlam, where this journey to number 17 began one year ago. Is tonight the night in fatal four-way action where Cena overcomes the odds and Cena becomes a 17-time champion? All remains to be seen. But here comes the man who has wreaked havoc over Monday Night Raw, or more, more suitably, should I say, brung doomsday to the red brand each and every week for months on end. The Harbinger of Doom 
that sinister destroyer, Karrion Cross. And one of the most interesting notes about this matchup tonight is that Karrion Cross has defeated both of the other challengers in recent months on Monday Night Raw. He owns a victory over John Cena. He owns not one, but two victories over the almighty Bobby Lashley. However, Karrion Cross, unable to defeat the WWE Champion Matt Riddle in his recent pursuit of the gold back at Money in the Bank. Of course, this past Monday night on Raw, Karrion Cross met Matt Riddle once again in a non-title match. I don't think Karrion Cross went into that contest seeking victory. He went into that contest looking to eliminate the Matt Riddle factor here tonight. Putting Matt Riddle through the announce table leaves the question of what condition is the WWE Champion heading in to this all-star collision course of a battle here at SummerSlam. As we said with John Cena's pursuit of the title, all remains to be seen in due time. Karrion Cross brings Doomsday upon his opponents, and he's looking to do the same here at SummerSlam, only this time leaving as the WWE Champion. Not one challenger, not two challengers, but three, all vying for the same end goal to become the WWE Champion here tonight in Levi Stadium. Because here comes the almighty Bobby Leslie. And introducing the challenger from Colorado Springs, Colorado, weighing in at 273 pounds, the almighty Bobby Lashley. The last time Bobby Lashley found himself surrounded by the main event and the WWE title would be last April 2022, where he was the WWE Champion. It's been a roller coaster of a year and plus for Bobby Lashley. Lots of ups and downs. He had a run as the United States Champion on SmackDown. A very impressive reign that ended back at WrestleMania. But once Lashley was drafted to Raw, the end goal has remained the same. Get back to the main event and become champion once again. And all these months later, through thick and thin, through wars with Lashley and a war, or excuse me, with wars with Karrion Cross and a war with John Cena this past Monday Night on Raw, Bobby Lashley has finally scratched things claws back to the main event. And tonight may be the night that the Almighty has waited for since last April. The three challengers are set, but the title can't be on the line without the champion. And the stallion himself has arrived on the scene in San Francisco, California. You know, we said that 2023 has been the year of Drew McIntyre, and it has on Friday Night SmackDown. But if any man is the opposite, if you will, in Monday Night Raw's case, look at Matt Riddle. He has taken Raw by storm. The 2023 Royal Rumble match winner, main event at WrestleMania, won the WWE title, retained over Randy Orton in Hell in a Cell, battles with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, beat the beast incarnate Brock Lesnar, and of course survived Karrion Cross five weeks ago at Money in the Bank. But tonight, the biggest challenge for Matt Riddle to date, the WWE title is on the line. Cena, Cross, Lashley, Riddle, fatal four-way main event is on. It has been an amazing night here in Levi Stadium, but this is what we've waited all summer for. The culmination of the war between these four all-stars with one end prize, the most prestigious prize in the history of the business, the WWE title. 
Matt Riddle pick it up where he left off with Karrion Cross this past Monday in a row. A score to settle with the Harbinger of Doom. John Cena, of course, lost to Lashley this past Monday night as well. Has not forgotten about that defeat. Of course, Fatal 4-Way rules. No countouts, no disqualifications. One pinfall or a submission to a finish here tonight. It is going to be a very difficult feat for any of these men to leave as WWE Champion. But you can't count out any of them. Even odds across the score. If you got my money on it, a 25% chance of winning for all of these superstars. But who, as we said with the world title matchup, wants it more? Riddle taking out Cross, at least for the moment. A lot of bad blood between those two men throughout the summer. Cross has left Riddle laying time and time again. Well, Riddle has gotten the better of Cross in the past. Will he do the same tonight as he comes off the top and the action spills to the outskirts? Again, no count -ups. This fatal four-way could go anywhere in Levi Stadium, but the decision's got to take place between those ropes. The winner of this matchup, no doubtably, will be the face of Monday Night Raw. That you can rest assured. Ashley and Cena again picking up where they left off on Monday Night Raw. An absolute incredible contest. If you missed out on the battle between Lashley and Cena and Sin City this past Monday night, go watch the replay. It was a phenomenal clash between the franchise and the almighty. Got the wild coyote cam going right now to try to catch all the action. As Matt Riddle now meets Cena in the aisle way. That's a one-on-one -on -one matchup that we've yet to see, but my goodness, if we see it in the future, you can bet the house it's going to be a collision for the ages. Well, meanwhile, Lashley ragdoll in the WWE Champion at ringside. And Matt Riddle, eye for an eye with Lashley, tackles him down. Karrion Cross and John Cena inside of the ring. Remember, Karrion defeated John Cena with the help of that Wicked Witch of the West, Scarlet, a couple of months ago to initially become the number one contender to meet Matt Riddle back at Money in the Bank. Scarlet nowhere to be found tonight. I think this action's a little too much for Scarlet to be at ringside. Dare I say, in harm's way for. Harry and Cross going it alone, and that's the way it should be. You want to become the WWE Champion, do it by yourself. Meanwhile, Harry and Cross is going for the steel steps, which is all legal at ringside, but John Cena is stopping those plans. And I believe looking to send Harry and Cross into the barricade. It's Riddle and Lashley are on a Pier 6 brawl here at ringside as well. As this main event progresses, I want to thank you for joining us thus far for it has been a fantastic evening here at SummerSlam. Dare I say our biggest and best live premiere event, not just of the season, but of all time. Thank you for joining us thus far at Levi Stadium. This is your main event, and the WWE title is on the line. Back to how we started, Lashley and Cena, Cross and Riddle. This fatal four-way gets split into a pair of 1v1s, at least for the moment. Cena and Lashley, same spot at ringside where this past Mother Night on Raw, Cena caught the Almighty with an attitude adjustment, which unfortunately was not enough to keep Lashley down and Cena sink. Oh, Karrion Cross, Bobby Lashley, those two men have had some wars on Monday Night Raw. As we mentioned, Karrion Cross with not one but two victories over Lashley. But Lashley owns one against Karrion Cross as well, going back to a WWE Live event in May. I'm a channel member, you can see the replay of that. Only available for channel members here on the No Nation Gaming YouTube channel. A lot of history between Cross and Lashley. Carrying Cross has stepped against all of these men in the ring. A lot of bad blood. Oh, wait a minute. Matt Riddle, coast is clear. Look at a stack of John Cena get the victory. But not enough just yet. That is really what this might come down to. Trying to find the right position, the right moment in the match. And the other opponents are at least laid to waste for a moment at ringside. And you can get the pinfall. But turn your eyes to ringside, because Bobby Lashley looking to settle the score with Karrion Cross in the midst of this matchup, unleashing an attack with that steel chair. But now Cross dishing it right back to the Almighty. Another shot. They're going to take out the legs, take out the knees of Lashley. Meanwhile, Riddle and Cena going at it. Inside the squared circle. 
John Cena looking for number 17. Matt Riddle look his, looking to keep his WWE Championship reign going. That started back at WrestleMania Sunday, back in February. Now Lashley and Cross still brawling at ringside. Cena down. Riddle the only man left standing inside the squared circle right now. Winner of this matchup can most likely be the only man left standing at all of ringside. Lashley, wait a minute. Has got Cena in electric chair position at ringside. Holy hell, what a counter from Cena. Cena continues to add weapons to the arsenal. A reverse poison Rana. Lashley goes down and Cena has changed the trajectory of that in individual battle in this match. John Cena's will to succeed is unlike no other, but so is the Almighty's, who continues to push forward. And Riddle takes out Karrion Cross with a big time cutter at ringside. Very Randy Orton-esque, RKO-esque. Things are breaking down here in Levi Stadium. Too much action to call. And Lashley takes out Riddle. And all hell is breaking loose, and we expect nothing less. These four men have been at odds all summer long, but only one man can leave Levi Stadium in San Francisco, California, and walk into San Jose for Monday Night Raw tomorrow night as the WWE Champion. Riddle's taking apart the announce table here at ringside. Meanwhile, Karrion Cross is focusing in on John Cena inside the ring. Karrion Cross. Look at, look at Cena getting sent for a ride by the Harbinger of Doom, who goes for the cover. Gonna win the title here, but Cena breaks it up. Or excuse me, Cena kicks out. Riddle tried to break it up. Cena beat him to the punch, but Karrion Cross a second away from leaving WWE Champion. Sending Riddle for a ride. And Karrion Cross left alone once more in the ring with the franchise, John Cena. Yes, again, ladies and gentlemen, the action non-stop. We're back tomorrow night for Monday Night Raw, live from San Jose as we kick off the road to Monday Night Raw's Unforgiven on Sunday night, September the 17th. But who will walk into San Jose tomorrow night, the WWE Champion? That is the question at odds we are hoping to find an answer for in the moments right now. Meanwhile, Lashley has got that hurt lock in on John Cena. We'll see to survive. Matt Riddle. Oh, Matt Riddle breaking it up. Had to throw some haymakers to make sure his WWE Championship remained intact. Lashley. Oh, springboard by Cena. Not enough to knock either man off their feet. What a slam by the Almighty. But now Cena takes out Lashley. Chaos, disorder, anarchy. Whichever adjective you want to throw, it will describe this matchup. As Riddle goes behind, but Karrion Cross breaks up the hold. A oh, Riddle tried to take out Lashley to no avail. The champion on the outside right now, left alone as the challengers battle it out in the ring. And a dominator by Lashley, a knee by Cross. Riddle back inside, German to Lashley. But Karrion Cross going after the champion, and Matt Riddle gets taken down. Cena! Oh, went for the attitude adjustment, but Karrion Cross stops him dead in his tracks. Things are picking up. Business at an all-time high in your main event at SummerSlam. Lashley has got steel steps at ringside as Cena, Riddle, and Cross are throwing lefts and throwing rights. Wait a minute. I think Karrion Cross has introduced another steel chair. We saw them swinging earlier against the Almighty. And Karrion Cross is eyeing up Lashley, but the Almighty right now going for a spear on Cena and Cross. Cross lied in wait and he hit John, or excuse me, hit Bobby Lashley. Not sure if he caught off with that steel chair. But Lashley looking to take care of Karrion. And now Riddle from behind. So much action to keep up with in this main event. A mile a minute, four bodies, four hearts, four souls. Badly it out for the WWE title. Lashley into the cover, but Karrion Cross not even going to allow the one count there. John Cena now, gut wrench, takes down the Harbinger of Doom as Matt Riddle comes from behind. 
Hits the backdrop on that steel chair. I don't even think Riddle meant to use the steel chair on that maneuver. It was just in the opportune state. Riddle got a little, a little bit lucky on that landing, if you will. Meanwhile, Lashley's inside the ring. He's got those steel steps as Riddle's focusing on the Harbinger of Doom. I don't know what Bobby Lashley's got in mind, but he's trying to introduce some hardware. As John Cena cutting Riddle off in his tracks, but Riddle hits the ax hammer. Who is gonna be the last man standing here in San Francisco? Lashley sending another pair of steel steps into the ring. The almighty is looking to introduce the destruction in this match, but Karrion Cross has got other plans here. Sending Lashley for a ride simultaneously as Riddle sends Cena to the outside. And Riddle with the senton, crossing Cena. A carrying cross hovering over a damaged body of the Almighty. And wait a minute, Cross with the straight jacket locked in on Lashley. Riddle breaks up the hole. Matt Riddle with a kick on carrying cross. Cena's out. Lashley's out. Riddle. Oh, wait a minute, going for the submission hold on the Horvinger of Dune. Punishment starting to take a toll. Cross taps out. Riddle retains. Holy hell. What survival instincts. Right place, right time. Lightning strikes for that stallion. The original bro somehow finds a way and is leaving San Francisco. The WWE Championship intact. What a brutalizing fatal four way. And Riddle is the last man standing tonight. Here is your winner, and still, the WWE Champion, the original bro, Matt Riddle. We are going to remember this championship reign for years to come. Matt Riddle is still the WWE. Oh my God. Uh, wait a minute, Seth, Seth Rollins is in the ring. Mr. Money in the Bank, Seth Rollins. I, 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 is this, is this happening right now? L ladies and gentlemen, Seth Rollins is cashing in. The bell has sounded. Riddles now. J the, the fatal four-way just ended moments ago. Rollins is cashing in money in the bank. Riddle, survival instincts. Ladies and gentlemen, we were not expecting this. An impromptu main event here at SummerSlam. The WWE title's on the line. Seth Rollins is cashing in on a weakened WWE Champion, Matt Riddle. The bell just sounded for the fatal four-way. Moments ago, and Rollins snuck in the back door. Cashing in money in the bank, but Matt Riddle is letting adrenaline flow through his soul, trying to survive a fresh Seth Rollins. I cannot believe my eyes. What better opportunity, what better moment for Rollins to cash in than the weakened state of the champion, but Matt Riddle still with a little bit of fuel left in the tank. I don't know, man. I don't know if Riddle's going to be able to survive this. You remember the attack from Cross this past Monday Night Raw, the fatal four-way moments ago. How is Riddle going to survive Seth Rollins? He may have just unloaded the last bit of energy left as Rollins now realizes that Riddle might still have some, some will left to succeed in his soul, and Seth is going to have to stomp it out tonight. Seth Rollins knows that money in the bank very well. We have documented this in weeks past, ever since winning that briefcase. Rollins, knowing that briefcase, knows the opportunity that it holds. Back in 2015, he cashed in successfully in this very building, Levi Stadium, the heist of the century, possibly the most famous money in the bank cash in of all time. And Seth Rollins has picked his moment to try and do it again. I don't want to undervalue Matt Riddle, if that's the word you want to look for. I mean, Matt Riddle's WWE Championship reign has been legendary. He has outlasted almost uphill battle after uphill battle. Hell in the Cell, Brock Lesnar, Fatal 4-Way. But can he survive Mr. Money in the Bank, Seth Rollins? I do not like this. 
Rollins realized Riddle still had some fuel left. And inside, instead of just going for a pinfall to try to capitalize on the champion, he has elect to try to beat down the champion a little bit more. But he better not underestimate Matt Riddle. Riddle going for the cover. Almost had him there. Riddle's trying to do anything he can to survive. Trying to outlast Rollins. But Seth Rollins with a kick that might have landed right on the heart of the original bro. And Rollins now. Oh, man. Matt Riddle, broken, beaten, battered, and bruised, is getting picked apart by the visionary who goes for the cover. We're going to have a new champion, not just yet. An impromptu matchup here at SummerSlam as Matt Riddle looks to contest Mr. Money in the Bank who crushes him in the corner. Oh no, a super stomp by Seth Rollins into the cover. We have a new WWE Champion and his name is the Visionary, the Revolutionary, Seth freaking Rollins! I cannot believe my eyes. Here is your winner and the new WWE Champion, Seth Freakin' Rollins! Lightning strikes in the same place twice. It was these very hallowed halls all those years ago where Rollins cashed in to become champion. But tonight, August 20th, 2023, he does it again. Seth Rollins, the new WWE Champion. Thank you for joining us here at SummerSlam. Good night, everybody, from San Francisco. on when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back, I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat, gonna see me rise, you can hate on that, I don't play both sides, doing me no cap, I'm a rock